What's your true supernatural, unexplainable, downright creepy story? I've posted this story before but I'll post it again I guess. Until a few years ago I still had an old slider phone. One day I got a random call asking for some girl named Sarah, I told them they had the wrong number and they intermediately hung up. For the next few months I would get these calls asking for Sarah about once or twice a week coming from different number and different sounding people. Sometimes these calls came at 3 in the morning, well one day I got a call and like usual I said I didn't know Sarah, and after they hung up I went to my contacts and hit redial. After I did the machine took over and said that number did not exist. I went back through my call history trying to call some other people that had called me with the same result, a machine telling me the number did not exist. Every time I would get these calls I would redial the number and still got the machine. I googled the numbers but all I learned is they were coming from North Dakota, Montana, basically everywhere in the Midwest which isn't all that weird because I live there. I started wondering what was going on so the next time I got a call asking for Sarah I said oh yeah, she is right here and the other person on the other end said no she isn't and hung up. Then things started getting weird when I started getting calls from unknown numbers calling me. Whoever or whatever on the other end hanging up the second I said hello. The creepiest one I ever got was from a call I got where they didn't hang up after I said hello, I could hear someone was on the other end just listening but they didn't say anything just something really uneasy about it. Eventually I switched phones and got a smartphone and I immediately stopped getting calls, I haven't gotten a single random call in about 3 years now despite the fact I still have my old number from the old phone. TL doctor kept getting calls from numbers that don't exist asking for someone I didn't know. Changed phones but kept same number but stopped getting calls. My grandma's is a very stereotypical horror movie house, small Midwest town, white and old looking home, on a farm, she even has a chipped wooden Mother Mary nativity in the front yard, you get the picture. The worst is she has a cemetery about a half mile down the road. Anyways, I used to sleep in the room in the corner on the top floor, my aunt's room, and it had a wooden rocking chair in it. When I was younger I would wake up because I thought I heard it rocking to the point where I would wake up my grandma and have to stay in her room. Well about 10 years later my mom, aunt and I during Thanksgiving were talking about how creepy grandma's house was. My aunt goes on to talk about how when she was younger the reason my mom and her ended up sharing a room was because she thought her room was haunted. She said she woke up one morning and the rocking chair was about 2 feet closer to her bed, and after that night it would start rocking on a nightly basis at midnight freaked me the fuck out. TL, Doctor, Haunted Rocking Chair both my aunt and I experienced in two different decades. From a different thread on unexplainable things. I don't believe in ghosts. About 10 years ago, my BF and I were in bed sleeping. He jerked awake and started inching up towards the headboard. Which woke me up. He was making scared moans and was looking at the foot of our bed. I looked at where he was looking and saw a short man with frizzy hair and a pig snout and jowls staring at him. Not me, him. He started screaming to turn on the light and I was reaching over to do that when it lunged at him and made a weird grunting noise. I turned on the light and when I did, it disappeared. We started talking about what we saw, and I would say, he had frizzy hair and he said yes, and a pig snout and jowls. Our descriptions matched perfectly. I felt this wave of absolute malevolence rolling off this creature and towards my BF, not at me but at him. We tried to recreate it with lights and shadows but couldn't. We slept in the living room that night. We didn't leave the house. I still don't believe in ghosts but don't know how else to think about this thing. I still get goosebumps thinking or talking, or writing, about this. I haven't told my current BF because I don't want to scare him. I'm still in a building. I haven't felt that evil feeling since the XBF moved out. Back in 2005 I was in a band that toured the country in a 15 passenger van with a trailer. We were on the way from Columbus, Ohio to Erie, PA. The show had been cancelled in Ohio due to a power outage. So we decided to get on the road early as we had friends in Erie, Pennsylvania who were taking us in for the night. 
while on I-80 about 25 minutes outside of Erie I'll never forget this moment for the rest of my life. We were all pretty much alert and actively having a conversation there were eight of us total in the van when the driver and passenger both shouted simultaneously what the fuck was that? I'm getting goosebumps on my arms right now just remembering the event. I was sitting being the driver with my back against the window and I didn't see anything but we heard a whooshing noise as if something flew right over the van. My friend who was sitting next to me looked like he had just seen a ghost, we wound up pulling over on the side of the road because everyone was freaking out, thinking we hit something. Nothing was found. Both the passenger and driver said they saw a tall black figure lunge at the van from the shoulder of the left lane, my friend who was sitting next to me said the same thing. No I don't think they were all playing a hoax on the unknowing members, because I know these guys and they were scared shitless. We arrived at our destination and the house we were staying at's power was also out. The next day we inspected the van in daylight and noticed there were streak marks across the roof of the van. Our van was white and also very dirty due to touring the entire country. Still to this day we don't know what we witnessed. We've done some research on it and similar reports have happened in and around the same area. I was reading the book The Mothman Prophecies around the time of that tour as well and I'm quite convinced we had an encounter with the unexplained. I was home alone and in the bath, but I had closed the door so that my dogs wouldn't run in and try to jump into the bath too, they always do, so I was in there for a good 45 to 50 minutes and when I climbed out and opened the door there had been a table moved right in front of the door, I never heard a thing while it was happening never even heard my dogs bark and they bark for anything and they were playing outside which is so strange for them. I have had so much weird shit happen to me in the house I'm currently living in, this was just one of many. Edit, I have added more stories within my replies. There was a stage of about three-fourths weeks where my dogs would refuse to sleep in my house, they would rather sleep outside, within those three-fourths weeks I would constantly feel like I'm being watched, hearing people coughing and sneezing outside my window, one morning I woke up with a scratch on my face, my dogs were all outside as they refused to sleep in the house with me. Woke up in the middle of the night once, I was partly sleepy partly awake, I needed the bathroom but I couldn't get through the door, something kept blocking me and pushing me back, I was physically pushed back to my bed and I just remembered climbing back into bed, woke up the next morning like thank god it was just a dream, got up and realized I was on the wrong side of the bed and I was filled with scratch marks down my arms and legs, scared the fuck out of me. This is more of a funny one, every night at 9 the door would rattle, seriously, every dot single dot night. Now my mom and her husband also picked up on this and one night my mom decided she was going to stand by the door and wait for the rattle sound of the door handle so without her knowledge her husband jumps through the bedroom window and runs to the front door and rattles it, I have never seen her run, glide and fly through the passage so fast, like I have never seen someone so scared, felt bad for her but hey cruel pranks. Would you guys like more? This is a story from my other house. I could honestly spend hours upon hours telling stories of all the crazy shit I have seen in all my houses I have lived in. Now this specific house is the house I grew up in and the first time I ever saw something I was 6 sevenths I had a playroom that was in the bottom part of the house, the house was set up in a way that it was just one long passage, 6 bedrooms, and my toy room was the last bedroom right at the end, now we never went to the bottom part of the house, I always thought it was because we never needed to, it's only later I found out the real reason why, but anyway to get back to the story, one specific day I had something I didn't recognize come into my bedroom and just told me to start running, I shat myself and ran to my mom, she immediately told me it was nothing and that is was probably my shadow and the TV in the background, only when I was older she admitted she's actually seen it herself, I described exactly what I saw and never spoke of it again, fast forward to a few years later my little cousin, probably four fifths at the time comes running out the same room screaming to her mom that a shadow told her to start running. Another incident, I would usually lay in the entertainment area and watch TV, also at the bottom of the passage, only in the day though, nobody dared going that way at night, 
This specific day I was laying down on the couch and my back was towards the rest of the passage, I was home alone at the time and we had tiles, so I hear footsteps walking towards me, and naturally assumed it was my dad so I didn't think anything of it after a few seconds I turn around and there's nobody there. I have literally a million more. They're always different though, it's never really been the same thing. Besides the scratches etc, I get days where I'm so content with it and others where I'm scared out my mind. I'm extremely open-minded, perhaps it's that. I get the most intense dreams too, every time I have dreamed that a loved one was going to die, they did. My gran, my aunt, my father, my pets. I am extremely fascinated by dreams, I think there's more to them than any of us know. Had a black cat called Casper. We adopted her after she ran away from the previous owner. She was missing for days before the previous owner found her in the bushes, skittish and frightened. After carrying her home, the owner discovered she was allergic to cats when her arm broke out with rashes. Call for new home and answered by my animal-loving family. For ages she was scared to come near anyone. Totally averse to being petted. Eventually she turned into a total sook, never missing the chance to jump on you and lie with you. We loved her and I loved her heaps. You could feel genuine affection out of that one. Then one day she lost the use of her back legs. Not long after, she passed away. I was having a rough time then and she was a big comforter. Point is me, and my parents, were sad. A few days after, I'm sitting on my front step having a smoke and I hear a meowing sounding identical to Casper. I look out front and there, at the gate, was a cat meowing at me, that looked just like Casper. I went over and it ran away. I looked down the street after it and it was gone. I mentioned to my parents. They both said the same thing happened to each of them separately, which was a surprise to them too. Now it could have been a coincidentally similar cat from the neighborhood, but it only happened once to each of us then was never seen again. Plenty of room for more rational explanations, but I choose to think that Casper said thanks before snuggling on that big belly in the sky. I was 12 to 13. We had just moved to the UK from TX the year before. We moved into the really nice farmhouse in the south of England near Wilton. We were completely alone for at least three miles in each direction. Anyway, on with the creepiness. The first thing that happened was in our kitchen. It was a large room with light fixtures in the ceiling. Those lights were flickering one night and I was just staring at them. Out of the corner of my eye I could see a girl, she was wearing a white dress with her hand on the window. Scared the fuck out of me. So I jumped back and tried to put my focus on her, but when I tried, she was gone and in that instant the glass of the light fixture fell. Second thing was slightly more terrifying. I was home alone, it was raining that night. Mom was out somewhere, friends I think, and I was just watching TV. It was about 9pm and I could hear scratching, not like a dog scratching the door to go out, like a long continuous scratch. So I look around the house and I see nothing. I sit back down to watch TV and I hear it again, but it sounds like it's outside so I dart out the back door to have a look, maybe a tree in the bad weather. But I saw nothing again. I come back inside and the TV is off and front door unlocked. I shat myself. I ran to get a kitchen knife and my mom's old phone. I hide in the office that is on the ground floor and text my mom and tell what is going on. She calls the cops, and they arrive. They have a look around and see wet boot prints that walk in through the front door, lead into the kitchen and then stop, no exit prints. My grandfather and I shared close birthdays two days apart, and we both loved chocolate cake. My mom learned her mom's recipe which was passed down from her mom so I guess I inherited this love for this chocolate cake. Every year we would drive upstate to see my grandfather on his birthday with a freshly baked cake and he would greet us at the door with a smile, take the cake off our hands, then disappear into the kitchen. He loved this cake. He also smoked a particular type of pipe tobacco which you could always smell in his house. To this day whenever I catch a whiff of pipe tobacco I think of him. Anyway he passed away in 2004. The next year for my birthday, two days before his, my mom was making a cake for me when she suddenly smells his pipe tobacco. 
Now he had lived hours away from us and hadn't been to our house in years due to my grandmother's failing health making her unable to travel, so there's no chance of his scent lingering around. My mom realized what was happening and just laughed, saying Dad don't worry, I'll set a piece of cake aside for you when it's done, but you have to be patient. And the smell went away. Now was it my grandfather's ghost visiting my mom or was it my mom associating her father with the cake, I don't know. But I know I'd come back from heaven for a slice of that cake. I was staying in the Flamingo Hotel in Las Vegas, oldest property on the strip with a sordid mob history. In the middle of the night I woke and saw a dark figure moving around the foot of my bed and coming up the gap between the twin beds. I hit the light and there was a full figure of a man in 5060s sport blazer with blood all over his face. I yelled go away. And start flinging my arm in his direction. Just like that he disappeared. I woke my friends in the other bed and my buddy said what the hell you swatting at? I told them and they laughed at me. The following morning, my buddy said after I had fallen asleep water was dripping on his head but there was no leak on the ceiling and was convinced we may have shared a paranormal encounter. Edit, my friends woke up when I started yelling and switched on the light. They saw my reaction but not the apparition itself. When I was about 14, I was staying up way too late on the computer. It was about 1 or 2 in the morning, and everyone else was asleep. I got thirsty, and wandered down the hallway to get a drink. I didn't bother to turn on any lights since there was a night light in the hallway and there was enough light to get by. I'm walking back to the bedroom when I get this weird feeling like someone is watching me, and turn around. There is this big white mist just floating right behind me. I immediately turned around and noped my way back into the safe bright room. The thing is, there were no windows facing that hallway and I hadn't passed the night light yet, so it definitely wasn't a trick of the light. All the doors leading to the hallway were also closed. A few years later when I was moved to the small room closest to that spot, I got the heebie-jeebies and couldn't sleep without a lamp on. It wasn't until some time later after the sighting that I learned that in the 80s, a guy was renting out the house. He was arrested for the kidnap, rape, and disappearance of a bunch of kids in the area, and for the suspected murder of his wife. They never found her, and she supposedly ran away according to him. Cadaver dogs went over the farm but they never found anything. The cops must not have done a good job though because when they moved in, my mom found a pair of boys underwear in the toilet tank. The missing wife was never found, and he died in prison about a decade ago. I think she's still there, though. Ugh, why do I read these at 3 in the morning? What's worse is when I can contribute. I saw what I think was a hellhound. This happened about 10 years ago. I was up late at night, I think it was somewhere around 3 a.m. I had to use the bathroom, so I left my room, and looked towards the front of the house, which is basically one long hallway. My parents' room was that way and so was the bathroom. There was a light left on so they could leave their room and use the bathroom. So anyway, I leave my room look down the hall, and in the light. I can see a black mass, laying down in the room before the bathroom, blocking the light from the bathroom. I stood there literally paralyzed by fear, staring at this black mass that looked like the shape of large dog. I'd say Rottweiler sized. And it was moving. I could see it breathing. I stared at it for at least 2-3 minutes before I finally convinced my legs to move so I could hit the light, and rushed forward. Just before I hit and turned the light on, I saw it move saw a flash of red, and then as soon as I flicked the light on, it was gone. It up and disappeared. I flicked the light on and off a couple times, but it was gone. There was nothing there. When I was 16 years old, my best friend the next door neighbor killed herself on January 21, 2006. Every night after that, I would either dream of her entirely, or she would intrude other dreams. I remember a dream about a dance recital once where everyone was dancing, she was in the back dancing with the rope around her neck. The dream wasn't about her, but she was there nonetheless. Very unpleasant stuff, it made my grief so much harder to get through. 
However, it was pretty clear those dreams were just that, dreams. I wasn't frightened, nor was I in any way denying that it was obviously my subconscious thoughts. I dreamed of her every single night. On December 31st, 2006, I went to bed. I remember that I dreamed that night that my friend and I were in a field with wildflowers. There was so much sunlight that everything was white. We were holding hands, very strange, and she was smiling. We lay down next to each other, and I was looking at her. We were silent for a while, and very serene, I asked her were you in pain? The sounds of the field was replaced by this progressively loud ring until it was so loud my ears hurt. She answered silently, I watched her face go from smiling to clenching her teeth, turning red, her face changing until she looked like she was in so much pain. She grasped my hand and hers so hard, with her nails digging in, so much so that when I woke up a few minutes later, I turned on the light to see if there was a mark. Of course, there wasn't, but that dream felt incredibly different than all the others I'd ever had. So vivid, and draw. I'm doing a terrible job at recounting it, but the point is, I never, ever dreamed of her again. I got over her death, and put my grief to rest, instantly. I'm now 27, it has been nearly 12 years. I once had a very odd interaction with a ghost. I was 10 or 11 and I was sleeping on a cot in my mom's room near the foot of her bed. Really late into the night I felt like someone was trying really hard to wake me up. I opened my eyes to see an old woman sitting on the floor with her arms crossed and rested on my cot and her chin rested on her arms. This meant her face was only half a foot from mine. I remember she had dark colored hair that was almost a bluish black and it was cut short and styled in those feathered curls I've seen a lot of old women wear. Well my jaw dropped I immediately scooted as far away from her as possible and just as I started sucking in air to scream she interrupts me and says, now don't scream. I've been to every person in this house and you're the only one I got to see me she scolded me in such a normal way I sort of calmed down. This whole time I don't think I was completely awake I think I was half asleep and that's why I was just accepting everything that was happening to me like it was normal. Anyways I think I asked her what she wanted or why she woke me up and she said she needed her damn papers. She kept implying this was her house and she can't find her paperwork to give to her kids. I tried telling her I can't find her stuff all of our stuff was here now but she scolded me again and made me get up and look. So I went out into the dining room turned on all the lights and started going through my mom's important paper drawers to find her stuff. I can remember her getting confused and saying she didn't recognize any of the furniture and I yelled at her of course you don't because this isn't your stuff it's our stuff and trying to tell her it's our house now her papers wouldn't be here. I still remember her face as she looked down really sad and confused. When I yelled I must have woke up my mom because she came out and asked what I was doing and the lady disappeared and I angrily told my mom some woman got me out of bed because she wants her papers. I never saw her again and no one else in my family said they saw or heard anything other than me walking around and going through our stuff. I'm a pretty logical guy agnostic leaning towards atheist so I think all the supernatural stuff is total crap, sorry. But there is one thing that happened a couple of years ago that I've never been able to explain. I'm out running errands and pull into a grocery store. I have to pee, but the grocery store has a unisex bathroom near the entrance so I figure I'll just use that. As I'm walking out of my car toward the entrance, I'm overtaken by an older gentleman in a tan overcoat. I'm a pretty fast walker, but this guy was clearly in a hurry. I'm following maybe 10 to 15 feet behind him into the store, and sure enough, he beelines it for the bathroom. He steps in and quickly shuts the door. Okay, fine, clearly this guy has to go more than I do. So I wait. A couple of minutes pass. God damn it, he's taking a shit. Five minutes pass. Seriously dude? I really have to pee at this point and am getting impatient. Ten minutes pass. To be honest at this point I'm kind of concerned. I knock on the door. No answer. Maybe he didn't hear me. I knock again. Still nothing. I wait a couple more minutes, then check the door handle. He didn't lock it. I open the door and, the restroom is empty. I seriously watched that guy enter the bathroom and close the door. 
There was one way out, and I was standing right in front of it. Short of a false memory in my brain, to this day I cannot explain what happened to Mystery Bathroom Man. As long as I can remember my grandmother had a cuckoo clock that I always loved when I was a kid. Throughout my entire childhood it would work sometimes and other times it would break and my mom would bring it in to get fixed. After about three to four times of getting it fixed my mom said it was too expensive and decided not to fix it anymore. They would still adjust the weights and the actual clock would work, but it did not cuckoo on the hour. Fast forwards to my sophomore year of high school, my grandma had to move up to Minnesota with my aunt for a better housing situation. Within months of moving up there my grandma got cancer again and became very sick. Due to the nature of the situation I chose to stay home but my middle brother and my parents went up during the week to say goodbyes. This meant my brother, parents, aunt, uncle and cousin were all present at the time of her passing. However, for the first time in almost a decade, the cuckoo clock that hung on the wall cooed on the hour after she died. About two years ago I had a lot of cats. Like, seven cats. Most of them were inside cats, but there were two males that weren't allowed inside because, you know, they were more territorial and tended to pee on my stuff. I live about a block away from a cemetery. It's small, pretty much just for locals and people who died hundreds of years ago, it's not really active. No one visits, really. The graves are a little dirty and decorated with little fake flowers that must have been placed there years ago, faded by the sun and weather. They look more like litter than anything, not attached to a grave so much as strewn in the general vicinity. My grandma is resting there. I didn't know her well, and we weren't close, but she's buried there with my great-grandmother. She died about two and a half years ago, in a nursing home after getting dementia. I never visited, I thought it was awkward and scary, she was withering away and had no idea who I was at that point. Looking at her was like looking at death itself, and I stayed away. I regret it, it's something that made me feel incredibly guilty, and I had many dreams about her afterward. I barely remember anything I did during the day, only that one of the outside cats kept scratching at my back door for what seemed like hours. As it got night time. He only got more violent about it, scratching louder and rattling the hinges, so I finally checked up on him at around 11 when I was ready to sleep. He calmed down the second I opened the door. He was weird though, not meowing at all, just staring. He didn't run inside like usual when I opened the door, it was like he was waiting. It was nice out, early November, but since it was fucking Florida, not cold or anything. I had nothing to do, so I went outside with the cat, intending to give the little guy some attention. The cat's name was Maxwell. He was a big muscular, black cat with green eyes, and he reminded me of Toothless the Dragon in appearance. He never shut up, it was like he would meow every three seconds on a loop, so I affectionately nicknamed him Whiner and Crybaby. He would suck up attention like his life depended on it, he was almost like a dog. I even taught him to fetch. When I tried to pet him though, he walked away, waiting a foot or two ahead of me. I went through a few rounds of that before just following him, a little curious and expecting him to lead me to a dead bird or a lizard. Instead, he walked out of the yard, always a step ahead of me. Whenever I would stop, he'd wait, and look back at me with his big green eyes expectantly. He was always so noisy, but he hadn't said anything at all for the whole walk. He seemed eerily serious, almost human. He took me to the end of the road, and started heading towards the graveyard. The closer I got, the more aware I was where he was going. I tried to pet him, pick him up and go back home, but he wasn't listening to me. I felt weird, tense but excited. It was hard to tell myself I wasn't dreaming, but I knew I wasn't. I half expected it to be a full moon, but it was about a quarter shy of that a perfectly normal but bright night. The graveyard was the same at night, all blue tone from the night and the moon overhead, but still messy and silent as always. Maxwell went right inside, and perched on a grave. It wasn't anyone I knew, the person had lived and died before I was even born. The cat didn't move though, so I sat near it and traced the carved words with my fingers. 
I read off the name written on the grave aloud, straightened up the flowers, and the cat finally seemed satisfied and moved on to another grave. And another. I followed the little ritual every time, Max wouldn't move until I did. Upkeep, recognition, moving on. I spend the better part of an hour there, scared I'd be caught by someone, or that I'd lose the black cat in the shadows, but he stayed mostly close, working his way through the graveyard. Cars passed by every once in a while, so I stayed low and tried to hide behind trees when they came. I guess someone saw me lurking in the place suspiciously, because a police car passed by after some time, and I decided that was it for me. There are pretty routine patrols, admittedly they could have just been passing through, but I couldn't risk being arrested for trespassing. I convinced the cat to come close and grabbed him. He wasn't happy but I managed to hold on to him and hurry out of the area, him over my shoulder like a little kid. I tried to reason with Max, telling him it was late, it was illegal, and that I wanted to help but I didn't know how. The second I got out of the graveyard he jumped back down, evading me, but he seemed to understand. He listened when I talked and followed me the five-ish minute walk home, this time by my heels. Every once in a while he would stop and look back. So I promised him that I would come back tomorrow, and he seemed satisfied. I was shaky honestly. He didn't seem like my cat at all, and I didn't understand what had gone on. I thought maybe he wanted to take me to my grandmother, but I don't know if I got close, or what would have happened if I didn't have to leave. I went straight to talk to my sister, in an attempt to rationalize everything and convince myself it was real. I told her what happened and she told me that it was November 2nd now. When I was outside with the cat, it was the 1st of November. All Saints Day, the first day of Dia de los Muertos. We spent a little bit talking, she helped me calm down and stop shaking, talking about a movie she watched. Afterwards, I spent the next day going back to the graveyard. I picked up flowers, righted little benches that fell over, and tried to pay respects to all the graves Max showed me especially the one for my grandmother. I lit a little candle, left a little statue by her grave that she used to love, and properly said goodbye. Max went back to his usual self, meowing constantly, knocking things over, begging for treats. I let him stay inside for that day and gave him a lot of attention. Max died a year ago in July, and I was out of town for that year's Day of the Dead, so I didn't get to know if anything would have happened again. I'm waiting for this year, though, and even if nothing happens I'll still go out and spend the night helping all of the lonely spirits who don't get any visitors anymore, in the little graveyard near my grandma's house. I posted this in a less well-read thread last week, but no hurt in repeating. A few months ago, a group of friends rented out a block of campsites near an amusement park. I got there Friday afternoon but a few of my friends had already been there since the night before. Several more friends came in around dinner, then were setting up their tents in the far campsite. I was nursing a headache and laid down on the bench of a picnic table. Just past this was a sloping path through the woods which lead to the bathroom slash showers. A huge floodlight was on the side of the building, and it illuminated the path, which was at max 50 yards long. My buddy Tim walked past me, asking if I was okay, and headed up to the bathroom. Fifteen minutes later, I opened my eyes and saw the silhouette of Tim walking towards me. He is a tall, lanky guy who wears a hat and walks with an odd gait. He is easy to recognize, even in silhouette. For some reason, looking at him, I had this weird feeling of dread that I at first couldn't explain. I watch him for a moment or so and realize that although he is moving like he is walking, he doesn't seem to be getting any closer. I sit up at this point, and look closer. Everything was wrong with what I was seeing. First of all, the combo of the floodlights from the bathroom and the little light left from sunset meant that the trees and plants were all casting long shadows, but things were still visible. Tim though, was just a black void, not contour or shadow on him. It was like someone had taken a one-dimensional cut out of him and filled it in black. Secondly, he was making a walking motion, but it was like he wasn't moving forward or getting closer, 
just repeating the same walking motion. Third, and most odd, it was like he was superimposed onto the scenery. The size of the shadow meant he seemed close, but for his feet to be touching the sloping ground, he would have to be closer to bathroom, and 20 feet tall. It was like bad 80s green screen where the figure doesn't quite fit. I watched this with increasing terror, and called over to my friend Michael. He was smoking a cigarette and walked over, looked up at the shadow and sort of froze, staring. The black shadow of Tim never got bigger or closer, but it did start to walk more urgently. Not running, but the steps seemed to be getting faster and more deliberate, the arms swinging more. I kept feeling this inexplicable level of terror and dread, but it was like I couldn't break away from looking. I felt like I was held, transfixed. I posted this in a less well-read thread last week, but no hurt in repeating. A few months ago, a group of friends rented out a block of campsites near an amusement park. I got there Friday afternoon, but a few of my friends had already been there since the night before. Several more friends came in around dinner, then were setting up their tents in the far campsite. I was nursing a headache and laid down on the bench of a picnic table. Just past this was a sloping path through the woods which lead to the bathroom slash showers. A huge floodlight was on the side of the building, and it illuminated the path, which was at max 50 yards long. My buddy Tim walked past me, asking if I was okay, and headed up to the bathroom. Fifteen minutes later, I opened my eyes and saw the silhouette of Tim walking towards me. He is a tall, lanky guy who wears a hat and walks with an odd gait. He is easy to recognize, even in silhouette. For some reason, looking at him, I had this weird feeling of dread that I at first couldn't explain. I watch him for a moment or so, and realize that although he is moving like he is walking, he doesn't seem to be getting any closer. I sit up at this point, and look closer. Everything was wrong with what I was seeing. First of all, the combo of the floodlights from the bathroom and the little light left from sunset meant that the trees and plants were all casting long shadows, but things were still visible. Tim though, was just a black void, not contour or shadow on him. It was like someone had taken a one-dimensional cut out of him and filled it in black. Secondly, he was making a walking motion, but it was like he wasn't moving forward or getting closer just repeating the same walking motion. Third, and most odd, it was like he was superimposed onto the scenery. The size of the shadow meant he seemed close, but for his feet to be touching the sloping ground, he would have to be closer to bathroom, and 20 feet tall. It was like bad 80s green screen where the figure doesn't quite fit. I watched this with increasing terror, and called over to my friend Michael. He was smoking a cigarette and walked over, looked up at the shadow and sort of froze, staring. The black shadow of Tim never got bigger or closer, but it did start to walk more urgently. Not running, but the steps seemed to be getting faster and more deliberate, the arms swinging more. I kept feeling this inexplicable level of terror and dread, but it was like I couldn't break away from looking. I felt like I was held, transfixed. I lived in a house in Yorktown, Virginia, right where the battlefields probably were. The house was creepy, the yard was creepy, and the woods behind the house were creepy. I used to sleep on my brother's bedroom floor and sometimes in my sister's bed because it was so creepy. I always felt some weird presence around me, I wouldn't say it was evil, but I couldn't tell if it was good either. Well, one night when I was 10-11 I was sleeping on my brother's floor. I woke up from a dream about a gas station. I remember feeling kind of weird. About 30 seconds to a minute after I woke up, I'm 99.9% .9 certain I was awake, I saw a man appear in the doorway. He stood there for what felt like an hour. He stared at me, dressed in old-fashioned clothing and a hat. He was completely white and gray, and a bit translucent. He eventually turned around and walked out the doorway. I saw him disappear. I ran into my sister's room and woke her up. After seeing a picture of my grandfather I never had the opportunity to meet, I think it might be him. She didn't believe me, but a few months later she did. I was at a friend's sleepover and she had a friend at our house. 
Her friend was awoken by a little boy who apparently looked like me. The boy apparently said he was scared. My sister's friend told my sister the boy was bugging her. My sister looked over, telling, the boy, to go back to my bed. It wasn't until the morning she discovered I wasn't there the night before. I have two that scared the shit out of me, both in the past couple months. One of them, as my post history might reveal, was like the old hag vision, but behind me as I slept on my side facing the wall. I was almost asleep, and I know I was awake because I just got up to use the bathroom five minutes before. Suddenly but still with a fade out, all the ambient noise stopped in the house and neighborhood and the silence was pounding. I then got the feeling that something bad was gonna happen, also I don't know if it was my imagination or actually happened, but I feel like I heard a whooshing sound that got definingly loud, as my heart rate spiked to around 200 BPM, it felt like, and I knew, not thought or felt, that there was something malicious behind me. About 4 seconds later it was over. Also. I went to bed one night after watching a bunch of spooky paranormal videos and was thoroughly on edge. I was ridiculously paranoid about ghosts even though I had never had anything ghosty in the house at all, nor has anything bad happened in it that I know of. Then at around 3 am, still not asleep BC of fear, the band on my boxer briefs snapped as if someone pulled on them then let go. Was convinced that I was being fucked with. From a very early age when my parents were still together we shared a house in my hometown. When I was alone in my room I often had an unsettling feeling of what I can only describe as dread. That room creeped me out so much even in the fate time. Things would disappear and turn up in really obvious places all the time. One morning I woke up to see my TV had been turned around so it faced the wall. Anyway many if not most nights I was kept awake by this feeling of being watched. I would always obstruct my own view from the corner of my room but didn't dare to turn my back on it. After a couple of years of being quiet about this I confided in my parents, told them everything. They just looked at each other and my dad said that they knew. Turns out whatever it was used to create a gap and spread everything to either side of the dressing table in their room and it freaked them out but they never mentioned it to me so to not frighten me. These events continued to the point my mother, devout Catholic insisted that we got a priest around. My dad reluctantly agreed. The priest came round a few days later. He was almost completely blind and deaf but he seemed to understand us well enough and was able to walk around on his own. Anyway we led him upstairs and once we reached the top he turned immediately and stared straight at my room without talking for like a solid minute. That creeped me out more than anything. I've had a lot of weird experiences, but because there were three events back to back, I guess this is my weirdest, it all started when I got off work around 11.30pm, I'm sitting in my work parking lot, which is facing a McDonald's, which is in the same lot. For lack of a better word, I felt like my brain was a little more on than usual. I felt kind of wired, I guess. Anyway, I'm on the phone but really have my eye on this car and the MCD's lot. I'm watching him pull out, and he keeps backing up until the back of his car goes into a big drainage ditch. He just sits in his car revving the engine, completely unaware. I'm assuming he's drunk. Finally, he gets out of his car and goes to look at the tire. He bends over and falls into the drainage ditch head first. Doesn't get up. I call the McDonald's and tell them and leave it up to them to call the police or whatever. After about 10 minutes the guy crawls out of the drainage ditch and gets back in his car, and resumes revving his engine. The cops then show up and go up to his window, he continues to rev his engine obliviously. At some point, they arrest him. I thought okay, now that that weirdness is over, I'll go home. And I begin the 25 minute drive home. I still feel weird at this point, like my brain was just on and I'm thinking did that have something to do with me? So a few minutes later I'm on the highway and this motorcycle comes up next to me. I turn and look at the driver, he turns and looks at me, then he just straight up falls off his motorcycle. His motorcycle goes shooting down the highway. I'm like what the hell? But I look back and the guy is getting up off the road looking really confused. That was bizarre. 
I'm thinking wow, what are the chances in the game, did that have something to do with me? Then I get home, this buzzing in my head still making me feel very out of sorts. After about 20 minutes this buzzing continues to intensify and I am sitting on my bed then everything gets still. All the sounds outside get quiet and the silence becomes deafening. I am thinking what is going on? Then suddenly, somewhere in the neighborhood there is a gunshot. Then the buzzing goes away and everything returns to normal. I still have no explanation. I worry some sort of psychic thing was happening, or worse, that I in some way caused these events. I really don't know. I suppose scientifically the most comforting thing I can imagine is that I picked up on some sort of fear pheromone and that is what I was sensing, but these three events occurred over the course of 2 hours and 30 miles, so even that doesn't really make any sense. So I lived in the same house from when I was born to when I was about 13 or so, but when I was 5 or 6 I went from having a daybed in the corner of my room to a larger, very tall, like, I used to lay under it on my stomach and read, that's how tall it was, bed that I had to climb into. Obviously like most kids I knew, that space under my bed, especially BC it was so big, freaked me out but that wasn't the weird unexplainable thing. The new position of my bed meant that I could see a certain section of wall in the hallway right outside my door. The hallway was kind of an L shape, with the short end where my door was, and the long end going down the other side of my bedroom wall down to where my parents' bedroom was. We didn't have any street lights in our neighborhood, but the bathroom was on the long side of the L and there was a night light in it, so if someone was coming up the hallway, once they passed the bathroom they'd cast a faint shadow on the section of wall I could see from bed. I became used to this pretty quick, cause whenever I'd wake up from a bad dream, I had them a lot when I was little, I'd be too scared to put my feet down next to the big gap under my bed, so I'd shout for my mom until she came to check on me. Within a couple months I could tell immediately if the shadow was her or my dad, and it was a very comforting sight. So probably nine months or a year after I got this new bed, I woke up from a really bad dream one night and looked out my bedroom door and saw what I assumed was my mom's shadow on the wall, already coming to check on me. Cue a flood of relief, and I called out, quietly, because I thought she was about to turn the corner, Mommy, I had a bad dream again. Except the shadow didn't move closer or further away, and no one came around the corner. For some reason, I wasn't scared yet, and was more concerned than anything, and because mom was right there clearly it was safe to get out of bed BC the monsters wouldn't grab me if she was standing there. So I hopped out of bed and padded into the hallway, and I could see the shadow this whole time, and I turned the corner, and there was no one there. I turned back to the wall and there was no shadow. This freaked me out and I went belting down the hallway and climbed into my parents' bed and refused to move because I saw something in the hallway. The next night, after all the lights are out, there's no word shadow. I hear my mom getting ready to go to bed and I call for her and watch and that same shadow appears on the wall as she passes the bathroom, just like always, and she tucks me in and all, blah blah blah. I didn't see it again for a few nights, until I had another bad dream. Woke up in the middle of the night, there's the shadow in the hallway, and I think it's my mom for a second and feel like everything's okay and I don't have to be scared, and then nothing happens and I call out and it's not my mom. I shout for my mom and I see the shadow disappear like the person casting it had gone past the bathroom night light the other way down the hallway, and then it reappears as my mom comes in to check on me. This happened a few times over the course of a couple months, always when I'd woken up from a bad dream, and it kept happening until we moved to a new house when I was 13. It's actually kind of funny, though because after I stopped being scared because it wasn't actually my mom, it didn't feel ominous in any way, and I was never scared to hop out of my tall bed in the dark on nights I woke up and the shadow was there. It was almost always there when I had bad dreams and on nights it wasn't there, I had a lot harder time falling back asleep, and my dreams tended to be worse. 
I kind of figured it was watching out for me while I slept, eventually. Not sure what it was. But I was the only person I knew at 12 and 13 who actually wanted to sleep with my bedroom door open, so I could see the shadow if I had a bad dream. This changed when we moved, the second week we were there, the playroom on the other side of my door, which should have been well lit from the street lights and moonlight coming through the playroom windows and from my windows, was pitch black, with a sharp line of the ink black of the playroom and the sort of normal nighttime grey of my bedroom in my doorway, and it was the scariest thing I've ever experienced. I never slept with my door open in that house after that. The first house that my mom and stepfather bought after they got pregnant with my sister had a few weird things happen. When she got old enough to communicate, she would wake up with a rash on her back crying about the bees on the ceiling. That was pretty much the extent of what happened in the actual house, but we had a detached garage probably 30 feet away from the back door of the house, and the garage had a loft that I decorated and hung out in when I was in my early teens. It started when I was jamming to music one day and thought I heard someone come in and being rattling through the toolbox downstairs. I shut my music off and called out, nobody there. Turn my music back on, a little while later I think I hear a quiet conversation going on, as if somebody is on the phone, turn my music back off and call out again, still no one. I turn my music back on quieter, swear that I hear some more rattling and someone open and close the door to leave, and I pack my shit up and go into the house and ask around, and nobody has been in the garage all day but me. I stopped hanging out up there. More and more I get a really eerie feeling about the garage, to the point where I don't like to have my back to it even in broad daylight, because it just makes me feel weird. Sometime later, I was telling a friend about it, and he was like oh, my dad has a camera, let's set the camera up there recording and see what happens. So that evening as the sun is setting he gets his dad's camera and we sit it up there facing the front of the room. In the garage, you climb up a ladder in the back of the room up into a hole in the floor of the loft, and if you look towards the front of the room you can see where the barn doors of the loft crack open and leave in a bit of light, so this is a rectangular little camera, nothing fancy about it, very much like the one linked here. We have the lights off, set it facing the front, and as we descend I take note that there's a little blue light on the back of the camera as it's recording, since I have already been tasked with retrieving the camera when we're done and I want to remember what I'm looking for. So we go and talk with my mom who thinks I'm crazy, and 20 minutes later I go up to get the camera, and the blue light is gone. And I'm like what the fuck, and I reach out to feel for it, and I realize that the camera has rolled over, not even onto its flat screen, but then once more onto its narrow top side to face the back wall of the garage. I grabbed that shit and bolted faster than I ever had in my life. We watched the recording, and sure enough around the 5 minute mark saw nothing, but heard and thud and then watched as the camera seemingly rolled over alone with enough momentum to not stop on the wide flat side, but on the next narrow end. We tried to leave his camera up there overnight, but his dad came to get it and I never saw that recording again. Around 10 years ago. My Mimir died of a heart attack in her bathroom, less than a year after her husband died. This was in July, if I remember correctly. My dad was absolutely devastated, I saw him cry for the first time in my life at her funeral, even though he'd been fairly stoic at his father's funeral. Life went on, though undoubtedly in a darker mood than usual for a few weeks. About a month after my Mimir's funeral was my father's birthday and he was working the night before his birthday into the morning hours of it, as was usual. My mother and I were up late, like 2 a.m., her on her computer and me on the PlayStation, when my dad came home. He worked around an hour away, and didn't usually get home until 6 or 7 a.m. We asked why he was home so early, and he said he got a birthday voicemail from his mother on his phone while he was at work shortly after midnight. His phone never even rang. He just suddenly had a new voicemail. Phone log didn't show any incoming calls missed. He played the message for us, and it was undoubtedly my Mimir's voice on that message. She said it made her happy that he missed her they had a pretty strained relationship, 
and finished the message with a quick happy birthday song and a line from his favorite lullaby from when he was a child. One of his sisters had a voice very similar to that of my Mimir, but she was younger and wouldn't have known the lullaby, nor that it was his favorite, and she denied that it was her. My dad kept that message on his phone until he got a new one and listened to it pretty frequently. The message was so bone chillingly clear, I honestly don't think it could have been anything besides her. Only paranormal thing I've ever believed in. Okay so, full disclosure, I had taken a good amount of LSD. But before you write it off as you drippy man just hear me out. Obligatory mention that I'm no longer religious, don't generally believe in the paranormal, and couldn't make this up if I tried. A good friend of mine from with that I met in boot camp for the Navy came out to school with me in CA for a few years. We started experimenting with psychedelics while freshmen, older freshmen but freshmen, in the dorms and had a mutual paranormal experience. My old university is built from the skeleton on an old army base that was a really big base for artillery and such and was shut down in the Clinton era. Everyone jokes the dorms were haunted because they were repurposed military barracks. We also had dilapidated, run-down old admin and hospital buildings around the campus that us intoxicated college students would explore as a sort of rite of passage. So one day we took a good amount of acid, I took five hits, he took three, and had a grand old time. As we were peeking, we decided to lock ourselves in our windowless bathroom and put in headphones and just trip and jam out to music. It was so dark that you couldn't see your hand in front of your face, let alone each other across the bathroom. All of a sudden the room expands in size and it's like I'm in a large square room with benches on all sides. On these benches are shadowy people of various shape, size, gender, age, etc. The problem is that they're all angry, sad, hurting, and or just not pleased that I can see them. I got really uncomfortable really fast and almost had to leave. But dead ahead was one shadowy figure that didn't seem to mind my presence, he actually was a very calming and soothing presence. Despite being made out of blackness in a black, lightless room, I could still make out the edges and some details of his silhouette. He was an average sized man in full dress uniform for the army, even in pitch black he looked snazzy. He didn't speak to me, per se, but he helped me understand the circumstances and resume my enjoyment of a pretty intense and vivid trip. I decided not to mention it to anyone, as I figured it was the drugs doing their thing. The next morning we met up with another friend of ours that was babysitting us to discuss the trip, and he commented that after we left the bathroom, we were pretty quiet the rest of the night and didn't say much, then we went to bed. My friend cautiously asked me if I felt weird that morning, or if I had initials stuck in my head. I asked him to clarify, because when I woke up, I couldn't stop thinking of the name Roy J. Miller. He seemed startled and said that he had the initials RJM stuck in his head all morning. We looked to our friend, who said that neither of us had mentioned anything like that. A bit perplexed. We shared experiences. Apparently we both experienced the version of the room expansion, the shadow people, and the sharp dressed military man who soothed our frantic minds and emotional states. We looked it up, and an east garrison of Fort Ord, the bass our school was built on, and my dorm building was the repurposed east garrison, there was a man stationed there named Roy James Miller, who went overseas to Vietnam in 1968 and died overseas while serving in the army. Saw a picture, and it looked about right from what we could remember. Couldn't believe it. Told this story a few times, still not entirely sure I believe it. But I can't deny that it happened, and neither can my friend. We lived in Okinawa for a while a few years ago. I don't believe in ghosts, but I can't explain so many of the events that happened in our apartment. The least scary had to be the boy. My son was describing this little boy that looked like his friend, who was Japanese, and how the boy wanted my son to follow him to the hallway. It was very matter of fact and only happened once. My son then said that the boy was trying to turn into a monster. 
I tried my best to ignore the goosebumps all over me and when he said that the boy had a yellow hat on, I almost lost it but managed to outwardly stay calm. I had been dreaming of a little boy coming to my side of the bed wearing a yellow hat and then turning to dust. Later, I talked to my friend about it and she laughed and said the boy had been hiding in her daughter's closet for a year now. Yellow hat and all. Soon, a new neighbor moved in and she came banging on my door one night. She said something had grabbed her leg and she saw a boy in a yellow hat run away. My neighbor didn't know my friend and I never told her about it. My kids were too young to be out and about talking to the other kids at that point. A local friend told me to put salt across my threshold and scissors out, because scissors signify the end of a relationship in Japan. I didn't feel really threatened until I began dreaming about a woman standing in the doorway of our spare room, staring malevolently at me. I hated going in that room because of the dreams and just a vague feeling I got there. I just always felt uneasy. There were always earthquakes so the little things like toys going off and especially the phone cord. Yes, we had a landline, swaying back and forth didn't seem too out of place. One night I stupidly decided to Google research ghosts of Okinawa and after a lot of boring stuff I already knew, I found a story that struck a nerve. It described a man whose wife was targeted by a female spirit. It sounded very frightening and when I finished the story, I was shocked to my very core to discover my actual building listed as their previous residence, which they'd moved out of a month before we'd moved in. The chances it was the same apartment were slim, but I slammed my laptop cover down and vowed to salt every freaking room in my house because at least it might ease the tension I felt there. Like a placebo. The absolute breaking point came when one of my kids ran screaming out of bed one night and I found them huddled in the corner, and I swore I heard a set of heavy footsteps as I jumped out of bed. It could have been sleep hallucinations, but I cried and held my child and whispered that we'd leave, and we did. I loved my time in Okinawa outside of my house. I can try to find the ghost story I found with my response, but I'm not sure how to do links here if I do. Probably late to the party, but here it goes. Want me, but my father. I was there though, we were at our family cabin, deep within the Norwegian woods. There are no running water in the cabin in the winter, as the pipes tends to freeze. We get drinking water from a nearby lake, and water we use for washing and cleaning we get from melting and boiling snow. This started one winter, as my father went outside to fill a tin can with snow. He crouched down by the side of the cabin, removed the lid from the can and filled it with snow. As he turned around to put the lid back on, it was gone. No big deal he thought. It probably slid or blew away, and since it was dark outside, he went back inside without the lid. The next day we went outside and looked but never found it, and eventually forgot about it. Life went on, and the next winter we were at the cabin once again. We still use the same tin can to collect snow, still without a lid. My dad went outside, filled the can and as he turned around he heard a weird sound as he took a step. There it was. In top of the new snow, at the same place he placed it one year ago. He was pale as a ghost when he came back inside. We moved halfway across the country when I was 11. Two weeks before the big move, my dad and I came to scope out houses and find my new school. We stopped at a house that was for rent and a truck in the driveway belonged to a contractor inside who was fixing things up. We walked through the home and I recall thinking how bizarre it was that he was painting the hot water heater in the basement. A couple weeks later, we moved into that house. Since we got there in a Thursday, I had a few days before I started school the following Monday. My parents bought me some coloring books and crayons to busy myself while they unpacked. In my brand new box of 64 crayons, there were only 63 and I was missing the blue one. Our basement consisted of a bathroom with laundry, storage closets, our vac unit, and a tornado hideout area. There is no reason why we would be down there except for showering or washing clothes. However, a few days later, I noticed something next to the hot water heater. I walked closer and realized it was a blue crayon. I was completely freaked out. 
but more so, on the hot water heater in child's handwriting, read Vilgros, let's play. I have chills just thinking about it. My parents cleaned off the crayon marks but several weeks later more writing appeared that said, it's Kevin. Turns out, the family that lives there previously had a son named Kevin who was my same age, but he was killed. Years went by and he still popped up here and there in weird experiences. My door would open and close by itself, my dog wouldn't sleep in my room, same room Kevin had, etc. Let me just start by saying, I'm 99% sure that it was all in my head, and I thought it was amusing until I told my so and she freaked the hell out and told me to never do it again. I guess it might fit here. Anyway, I've been experimenting with lucid dreaming for some years, and I'm able to control my dream on a semi-regular basis. But I have, had, recently been experimenting with sleeping paralysis, as the idea have fascinated me since I discovered it. I've long gotten over the initial hallucinations, black figures and such, google it, that shit looks real af, and I'm now, kind of, able to induce the paralysis at will. Now for, what I think of, as the creepy part. When under sleeping paralysis, my body, as I see it, isn't moving, but it feels like it does. I am for example able to feel my hand touch my face, even if I see it lying on my stomach, side. So extending this, I tried leaning up, still seemingly not moving my body. It was hard, felt like moving through thick water, but after some struggling, it felt like I was sitting by the bedside. This meaning that I felt myself sitting, and my sight had moved position, but looking to my right, I could still see my legs on the bed, lying down. Worse yet, trying to look left, I was unable to look at my own face like something was stopping my eyes from turning that far. Now to me this was just a dream, and so I was simply fascinated, and decided, why not stand up? And so I did, and I decided to walk to my window, still, looking down, not seeing my feet under me. Then turning back to my room, I was able to see my body up to my neck, but I was unable to look at my face. Still not freaked out, as I've seen far worse things in my dreams, I decided to try and move things in my room, and walked over to my clothes lying on the ground. This is where things get a bit fuzzy, because I seemingly forgot that I was dreaming, and started picking up my clothes and putting them on, however, I could still not see my body, and the clothes I picked up stayed in place even though I could feel picking them up. After getting dressed, or feeling such, I decided to head to the kitchen for some breakfast, it was a Saturday morning I was doing this. And it was as I was heading to the door, I looked back into the room again, and saw my body on the bed. That is when I kind of freaked out, as I had forgotten all about my experiment until I saw my body again. Still not being able to look at my own face, I decided enough was probably enough for now, and walked back to my bedside, leaned my, invisible, head as close to my, visible head, as possible looked at my lying body as if I was lying there myself, and closed my eyes. When I opened them again, I was lying in bed again and could move. So yeah, I swear that everything I've written here I myself experienced, and is not a creepy pasta or no sleep, as if I write well enough for that. P's, sorry for long reply and grammar mistakes, wrote it in a relatively short work break. I worked graveyard shift at one part of my life. I was a security guard in a facility. One day it was me and another male guard. Take note that the place was very chill, and genuinely a place that never would have any type of suspicious incident. I loved that job. Well one night, we were manning our stations and I tell him I've gotta use the restroom. Our restroom was about 100 meters away. So I walk into the bathroom. While washing my hands. I start to hear a female voice singing. I turned off the water to hear it better and it was so clear. It sounded like it was right outside the bathroom. I thought it was my co-worker fucking with me and I walked out and said why are you doing that? And there was no one there dot 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 I then looked down the hall and out from where our station was, my co-workers pops out and just says what did you say? 
From the time I heard the singing while washing my hands to when I opened the door was not enough time for him to make it back to our stations. I didn't ever tell him about the singing I heard. I was not a believer of supernatural occurrences until then. I'm making this post from a throwaway not because of entertainment or to creep you out, but to get an answer. I'd rather not have this story linked to my original account due to the connections on it. So if you have a logical explanation, please let me know. This is the only thing preventing me from becoming a complete skeptic. I really want to believe there's shit not there, I have schizophrenia, etc but I don't think I do. I wake up at midnight feeling like there's something in the room with me. But because of this experience, and a lot others, I can become a complete skeptic. And that's keeping me scared during those times. So, onto the story. About five years ago when I was 16, or 17, I was chilling on my bed that was in the bottom right of my room, watching the TV that was in front of my bed, top right of my room. I was just chilling at the end listening, watching to a podcast. When all of a sudden I had a very very strong urge to look to my left. When I did, I saw a bright orb, the size of a basketball, roughly. The height is hard to say since I don't know, remember exactly the size of it and exactly how far it was. But from my perspective it was about 6 to 7 feet from the floor and in the middle of my room. When I looked at this thing I just looked at it frozen for about 2-3 seconds. I remember it being very bright. A white light. I remember not feeling threatened by its presence in my room. After the duration this light grew rapidly. Like a supernova, it was quick like an explosion, but it wasn't a medium gradual growth. Once the light filled my eyes I felt absolute euphoria. Peace, calm, happiness, and so much love. I never met a match for this feeling yet. Not even close. Unfortunately, as quickly as the light grew, it also dispensed into nothingness. The euphoria lasted two seconds at most. And when the light went, so did the feeling. Of course I cried a little shortly after. And whenever the days were dark and gloomy I pleaded with the silence to bring back the light and allow me to escape. I never saw it again. But I still feel something with me. Something that makes me feel like it'll all be okay when things get real tough. Like a switch. A sensation fills my body with peace. I honestly can't describe it. I feel like I don't deserve it, I assume everyone gets this. Feeling. Funnily enough after this experience with the light I completely changed. I was a dickhead to people I cared about. I was selfish and oblivious to my actions and how it would affect others. Since then I can't help myself but be caring and aware of the people around me, especially animals. I'm not saying this experience had much to do with my growth. Maybe I just grew up from a brat of a teenager to an adult. But it was an overnight change. You can see why I made a throw away for this. I sound crazy, pretentious and narcissistic perhaps. But I just like answers. And hopefully someone to tell me I'm fucking crazy and I should go see a therapist haha. <laughs> Sorry for the rambling. Let me know if you'd like to hear more of the spooky stories or more of my paranoia episodes. I post this every year for the last three, no one has given me an answer I haven't talked with my doctor or researched prior, yet. When I was a child I lived down south, we had one of those big fans in our hull that is supposed to suck the humidity out of your home. It had a high and low setting and the high setting did not work. One winter in the middle of the night we had a carbon monoxide leak in the home. The fan turned on on high and because it was running my brother and I, rather than dying, got really ill and were able to wake up and go to our parents who then became aware of what was happening. The fire department said if the fan had not been on we probably would have all died. It was just very weird for the fan to be on in winter, on a setting that didn't work, and didn't work after. My mom is convinced her mother and father who had passed were responsible. I don't know what the explanation is, but those are the facts. I would like to tell a non-creepy story here, just because I have a couple of ghost stories I have told before but these threads never give me a chance to tell this one. In Proxley, near Watford, Hertfordshire, UK, there is a moorland with a river running along it. Halfway down the moor, 
walking west, the river jinks to the right, northwest, and the bank rises up a meter or so. On a hot, bright summer day I was walking along toward the raised bank of the river. As I got to the peak I looked into the river and there was a man in there. He was a big man, six foot four if anything, long bearded and quite fat, in the water up to his waist and apparently naked. He looked at me with shock on his face as if I had startled him, or he hadn't expected to be caught having a dip. So as not to embarrass him, and because I was unconcerned, I waved a hand casually and kept on walking along the bank. I'd intended to look away and keep looking away, allowing him to salvage his modesty, but the river turns, the bank turns, and so I had to turn. No more than three paces on, and it was clear from peripheral vision that he'd gone. I was standing on a high bank, slightly elevated over the surrounding land, I can see both ways along the river for 100 plus meters, and he's just vanished. There was nowhere he could have gone. He want underwater either, it's barely waist deep and slow moving, and clear. He never even left a ripple in the water. It took me several minutes to accept he hadn't been real, despite seeing him from no more than 3 meters range, in bright sunlight, I didn't know he was a ghost until he vanished. And that made him the oddest ghost I ever saw. Copying and pasting a previous reply of mine to another thread. I have many but one which stands out happened on the first Saturday in July 2008, either the day before or after July 4th, I forget which. I have moved into the castle owned by a widowed old lady who was a friend of mine in order to help her run it, it was open to the public for tours and events. We had a tour where where the chaperone of a group of students broke away from his group and wandered down one of the galleries. I caught up with him and asked him to return to his group. He stopped in front of the doors connecting the gallery to the ballroom and said watch this. He waved an EMF detector in front of the doors and it went off like crazy. Finally, he joined his group, the tour ended, and we started to close up the castle for the day. An hour or so later, it was just me and the owner. She was on the third floor playing the pipe organ in a room with a balcony overlooking from one end of the ballroom. Alongside one long end of the ballroom was a musician's gallery. I was walking along there, approaching the door at the end which led to my apartment, when I heard someone call my name from nearby. I turned and there was no one there. I went to the organ loft and asked the owner if she had called me and she said no, but she heard something down in the ballroom. I went down to check and didn't find anything. Then I went to the doors connecting the gallery. When I opened them there was a blast of hot, static white air rushing in, even though we had closed windows and doors. I called the owner down and she approached via the gallery and her hair started to lift off of her head. She said there was something here which ought not to be here. Entering the ballroom, she walked to the middle of the room, looked up at one of the large stained glass windows, closed her eyes and said show me your face. She jumped back and said she had seen something sinister. She again closed her eyes, pushed her hands forward and said get out of my house. Her hands strained against something I could not see and as she pushed forward she was leaning about 45 degrees on the tips of her toes. Suddenly, there was a loud bang from behind me and another stream of hot, static quiet air. The owner fell forward onto the ground, got up, and said it's gone. However, for the remainder of the evening, we heard laughing, whispering, knocking, tapping, footsteps, and echoes throughout the castle. I contemplated leaving that night but remained for a couple of years. I had many other experiences at the castle, including getting locked in a room while home alone and having the doorknob come off, doors opening in my bedroom at 3 am, the staircase shaking as an invisible force moved up or down it, etc etc etc. I'll try to keep this as short as possible but I probably won't. I got a job working abroad and my company provided me with a simple apartment upon my arrival. I moved into the ground floor of an old and even moldy apartment. The apartment was a studio with just the basic necessities. A co-worker of mine mentioned that there were some strange electronic issues another worker had described, mainly the TV would turn on on its own now and then. 
I didn't think much of it at the time and I was simply focused on making a good impression at my new job as an ESL teacher. Sure enough, I started to recognize that the TV did seem to have a mind of its own. I don't watch TV, and I was busy trying to adjust to my new environment. Sometimes I would go to work and then realized I left a textbook in the apartment and I would go back to pick it up. Upon re-entering the apartment I would find the TV on at a pretty high volume and knowing full well that I hadn't turned it on. No big deal, maybe I had it turned it on by accident before I left for work. Another time I came home for lunch to find the same thing, the TV was on, at high volume and I was 100% certain I hadn't turned it on. Must be the electronics issue my co-worker had mentioned. No big deal. Then. One night I was fast asleep on my single bed when I was awoken by the blaring sounds of my TV that was positioned at the foot of the bed. I remember wondering how the hell I had it turned it on. Maybe accidentally with my foot, however unlikely? So I sat up and quickly turned it off. Several hours later the TV woke me up again. This time loud white static woke me with a startle and flickering bright light filled my tired eyes. This time I was annoyed. I sat up and turned the volume all the way down before turning it off again and crashing back down on the bed. It happened a third time and the volume returned at a very high level. WTF. I finally got up and unplugged the TV and cursed through my teeth until I fell back asleep. This became a semi-regular occurrence until I unplugged the TV permanently. On several occasions I had a different kind of experience coming home to my dark cave-like apartment. Only this time it wasn't the TV that caught my attention. I distinctly remember opening my front door and as soon as I entered the door frame I would feel like I was intruding in my own apartment. It's difficult to describe but I would feel unwelcome, like I was walking into someone else's apartment. This went on for the first two three months living there. At the same time I started to have nightmares. Nightmares that were reoccurring and vivid. I would dream that I was being dragged from my bed through the floor and dragged further and further underground through layers of soil, mud and rock. The nightmares were dark but what freaked me out the most is that they were violent and I would be dragged down into an abyss with such speed and force I would wake up in a panic. One night the nightmare was especially intense. This sounds unbelievable but I remember laying on my back and physically feeling a hand wrap around my ankle and trying to yank me pulled me off of the bed. I woke up suddenly and felt the presence of someone or something in the room with me. I quickly jumped to turn on the lights and though of course there was nothing there to see, but I felt like I wasn't alone in the apartment. I thought I was being ridiculous. I would look in the mirror and talk to myself, telling myself that this is preposterous. Get a fucking grip. You're just stressed out about the new job and you're anxious and that's why you're having these nightmares. I am 6 feet 3 inches and probably weighed 220 pounds at the time. One night, I fell asleep facing the wall. I generally sleep on my side. I remember being asleep, but during my sleep I was slowly becoming aware of two things. First, I was waking inside my dream and second there was someone next to me inside my apartment while I slept. This feeling kept growing and soon I was awake staring at the wall with my back to someone standing next to my bed. I was sure of it. Like the feeling you get when you know someone is staring at you in a crowd. I stayed staring at the wall in the darkness without moving, just breathing and listening. I tried to be rational maybe it was the girl I was seeing. Maybe she snuck in to surprise me with a late night visit. But I knew that wasn't possible, she didn't have a spare key. No one did. I could feel cold air against my skin and as I lay there staring blankly at the wall I could feel the hairs begin to stand up on my neck. Suddenly, I began to feel foolish, I started to laugh a little on the inside, just turn around and you'll see that there isn't anyone or anything behind you. Don't be a pussy. Just turn around and... A rough firm hand landed on my shoulder and pulled at me. I swung around and saw her. It a pale old woman in a tattered gown who seemed to be howling at me without a sound, reaching for my face with one hand and the other hand resting on my shoulder. I leaped into the air and literally climbed the walls to get away from that demon. 
It had physically touched me and it was not a dream because I had laid there for several minutes staring at the wall. I scrambled around the walls to the light switch on the far side of the room and when I hit the lights she disappeared. I stood there for a few minutes. Then I turned on all the lights and turned on the radio and the TV just to provide the illusion of company or a distraction, I don't know. I wanted to leave immediately, but I had nowhere to go, I had no real friends and it was 3 a.m. on a Tuesday. I kept the lights on and I opened my laptop. I sat at the edge of my bed and logged in online to see if I could find a friend back home who was still awake, anyone to talk to really. I then realized that there was a cold spot next to my bed, where I had seen her. It was much colder than the rest of the room. I had no windows open and the AC was broken. I walked over to the thermostat and noted that it was 26 degrees Celsius. The rest of my apartment was toasty warm, except for the area right next to me bed. I was spooked. I didn't sleep at all that night. I told a few co-workers about my experience and they all had a good laugh at my expense. I became the butt end of a lot of jokes but it didn't really bother me. Some weeks later, when I was out with some co-workers for drinks the subject of my ghost game up and one of the co-workers said that the previous tenant, a teacher who had just left the country, had had some weird things happen at the apartment. And, that before him an old lady had killed herself in my apartment only six months earlier. I didn't have any more encounters with the old hag and I moved out of the apartment within a month or two of the incident. Apologies for the wall of text, I'm on mobile. I was going for a nice jog down the lonely dirt road near my house. I know it isn't recommended to run in the middle of the day during the summer, with the heat and humidity and all that, but I like getting down and working up a sweat. I don't mind heat much in general. Anyway. I live in that part of the Midwest that's flat. I mean on a clear day you can see 10 miles in every direction. As I'm jogging down the road I start slowing down because just ahead of me behind the fence bordering the road is a huge field where the local rancher lets his cattle roam. I don't like running near cattle because the horseflies start biting me and I also don't want to spook the herd. I figure I'll edge up as close as I can and turn around once they start noticing me. Well I get about 20-30 feet away before I look up and you know, really look at the cattle. They usually start getting quiet when they see me getting too close and I hadn't thought to really look at them to gauge their reactions until I was that close. I made eye contact with a person. I mean, I felt like I was looking up at a person at first because one of these cows right up at the fence had a human face. Like, it was a cow with a person's face. That's it. That's what it was. It was a ginger longhorn with a plain, dull, devoid of defining features face of a mannequin. I was close enough to see what it was. It wasn't the heat. I wasn't hallucinating. I'd gone for longer runs in way more hot, humid, broad fucking daylight conditions than what I was running in that day. We get our share of weird shit where I live but something so blatantly unexplainable happening to me was new. I made sure not to look away from this thing because I wanted to make sure it didn't start twitching or running at me like some kind of fucked up scary movie. I paused my music and began backing away quietly. I didn't know if this thing was about to start speaking to me or what. It looked like it could, almost like it wanted to. I kept backing up until I was what I deemed far enough away and I turned and ran the fastest mile of my life back to my house where I locked the door behind me and spent the day watching her down through the upstairs bedroom window. I told my family about it that night but I mean, what can you do at that point? Could have been a skinwalker or some shit, except I didn't know they could move this far north. TL, Dr. Cow with a human face doesn't want me to exercise. This happened maybe a month or two ago. Let me start by saying last December my grandparents were driving home from church on Sunday, holding hands and enjoying the scenery when another car swerved over and hit them head on. When the ambulance got there one of the nurses was holding his hand and he had told her to tell his wife he loved her and then he passed. Hours later my grandmother passed in the hospital. It was devastating, I loved them both very much. It chills me to this day knowing that they always prayed to die together and they did. Anyway, I have nightmares usually every other night, but this particular night it wasn't a nightmare. 
I dreamed that my grandfather was standing in front of me, giving that warm smile he always had. He was wearing the blue button-up shirt he had on in the picture from the funeral. He was holding his arms out towards me walking ever so slowly and I could hear his voice saying I love you. And he hugged me. It felt so real and so special. I woke up crying. I believe my grandfather visited me in my dreams that night. It makes me tear up writing this, I'd love for that to happen again but with my grandmother this time. Me and my best friend went for a walk in her garden. It was a communal garden and there was huge trees. She ran ahead into the trees and I followed her. I literally have no idea why we went into the garden, I can't remember if there was a reason, we just did it and it was really weird. I walked into the tree that she was at and it got dark because the tree's branches came down to the floor and it was completely covered, she was sitting on this curved branch quite high up the tree, which was weird because she was like one second ahead of me, and she was shouting come in and using her hand in a really weird way to emphasize that she wanted me to come in. I kept saying no and saying it felt weird and I wanted to go back. The next thing I know she has fallen off the tree and she was laying on the floor with a huge bright white light over her and I ran towards her. At that moment I can't remember anything it's like time skipped forward because I was back where I had ran from at the entrance of the tree and she was running at me, screaming at me to run back to the house. We both ran back to the house and sat there in shock for a minute. She had big scratches on her forehead and said that someone had grabbed her by her hair and pushed her head repeatedly against the tree. We told her mom, she looked really shocked and said that earlier her sister had told her she had a dream about the tree in her back garden the one with all the hanging branch down to the floor and there was a little girl in there sitting on a branch telling her to come in. The creepiest thing ever. I have a few paranormal creepy experiences. 1. I had moved into my house my parents had built when I was around 11. My room was at the very end of the hallway, which was long I always hated sleeping facing the door because I would always get this very ominous feeling. However, it was usually always open at night just in case. Since my parents room was on the other side of the house entirely and I wanted them to hear if I called them. Well anyways, I remember that after years of living there, I started to see this shadowy figure stand at my doorway and just look at me. He was very tall and dressed in all black. He would come whenever I had sleep paralysis too. He didn't look like a shadow on the wall either, just a solid black mass, void, but for some reason I could always see his eyes still. He also had a hat but it didn't have a wide brim. I saw him every once in a while for a few years, but I've moved since and now I don't see him anymore. It was also interesting that when I told my dad about this, the same thing happened to him when he was younger. 2. I'm going to make this one short since it's 2 am and I'm extremely tired. Basically, I had been working at a national park, where there was the largest loss of Indian life in a single battle. I lived on the park also in the seasonal housing. We had just moved in, my roommate and I, and things seemed fine. However, one night I was having extreme difficulty going to sleep. But next thing I knew, I had blacked out. That's the best way I can describe it. But I also remember this feeling of drifting off where I also felt something being torn out of my body. I want to say it was my soul. That's what I feel like it was. But these bonds were all over my body and would eventually rip with a sudden snap that I can still clearly remember feeling. Next thing I knew I was looking down at myself in bed. The room was pitch black and featureless aside from me in my bed. But the window was wide open and the full moon was visible. I looked out the window and this giant red eagle appeared and was obviously very angry. It was flapping its wings and screeching at me. I got scared and tried to run into the hallway. But when I turn around I saw a figure standing at the open door. And just like that, I just snapped right into my own body. I immediately sat up and was sweating profusely, gasping to breathe, and was very panicked. I couldn't sleep for the next few days. Because whenever I did almost fall asleep for a while after that, I could feel it happening again and would force myself awake. 
TLDR saw a ghosty man in my hallway that my father also saw when he was a kid. Also had an out-of-body experience. My uncle grew up in an old Scottish house that came with the job as gamekeeper for the reservoir it was next to. It is a large place, even having a turret and battlements is on one corner. My uncle would always tell me of the time he saw a grey lady standing in the door frame of his room. My uncle grew up extremely terrified of the dark for that very reason, and this in itself went a long way to the family believing it was true. Fast forward to about a decade ago, the family are all up in Scotland again revisiting places of their childhood, and then we happened to go near the old house. We ended up knocking on the door, and kindly the owners agreed to let us tour the old house, a bit of a nostalgia trip for my uncles, aunt, and father. We came across old reminders of their time in the house, such as scratching the favored football team on the inside of the cupboard. We ended up asking them about more paranormal things, and the conversation ended up going like this. So, have you heard about the house being haunted at all? Oh yes, you must mean old Tam. He rattles around the tower occasionally. No, that doesn't sound right, it was more in the basement. Oh, the grey lady? By which point we all became very silent and left shortly after. I was never really sure growing up that my uncle was telling the truth or not, but this experience taught me to keep a very open mind. This actually happened this week. Not going to put my heart out into this post, as it's probably buried among many other, terrifying, posts. I never thought my grandpa's, G, or grandma's, GM, house would be haunted. I noticed a few things out of place occasionally, but never thought too much of it. But one time when G and GM were out of the house, I went to the attic to get a few things. Well, I stumbled across a few notebooks. I'm naturally curious, and I love reading. I'm instantly intrigued. It turned out to be a journal of some sort. After reading a few entries, I figure it may be GM's. However, the entries are really dark, and unlike her at all. It was her writing though. She would have conversations, I don't know if it was imaginary voices she was hearing, or if it was ghosts. Several entries stuck out to me. There was an unhealthy obsession with a bracelet, and she hid it from her because she was attached. I don't know why. Then one of the voices, ghost, told her where he hid it. She looked where the voice said it was, and it was there. Then there were entries saying I don't belong here. I don't belong here. I belong in city name. I was made for city name. Like repetitively. And then there WSS1 entry, where she told her voices to pick a color so she can differentiate each from one another. She would have conversations with them, and ask why they are with her. One of the voices said he or she wanted love, acceptance, etc. She communicated with each voice you can tell the difference between the voices through what color the voice picked. It ended with G doesn't know. I need to put this away for now. G's home. The whole time I was reading, I felt an overwhelming presence around me. I was freaked the fuck out. I put away the journals and left the attic. That's when more noticeable stuff started happening. I would be home alone and I would hear loud bangs through the house, or it would be 30 degrees and I would get a huge gust of cold air. I saw shadows a lot. I felt like I was being watched, my diary was moved. Used to be fully on the nightstand, but it was half off. My items were dispersed randomly through the house. The scariest moment I had was I went into my room to get something and I had three cups in a row before I left the room. Well I came back, and one of the cups moved from one fucking end of the table to the other. No one ever goes into my room, too. Since I've seen enough horror movies in my days, I noped the fuck out of there. GM was a complete different person than she portrayed in her journal. Like I mentioned, I've watched a lot of horror movies, and acting obvious and weird around GM would only do more harm than good, so I acted normal, and tried to keep my shit together. I asked a few casual questions about the house. It was a really old house, and several people lived there before. I asked GM where she wants to live, but she said she's happy where she is. Yesterday, 
I was looking for my hairbrush to pack. We were leaving. And it was nowhere. I looked everywhere in my room, since I just brush my hair really fast in the morning and don't bring it to the bathroom. I asked my brother if he saw it, and he went to help me look for it. I heard a small voice in my head it's in the bathroom, mock laughter. Several moments later, my brother found it, hidden under the sink at the very back. There's no way it would have fallen behind. It wasn't possible. I was so fucking done. I know it was kind of my fault for reading the journal, but there was stuff going on before too. I just felt drawn to it. I didn't look at it again after the first time. In our first house when I was very small I remember a memory of seeing a smoke person at the top of the stairs. In the next house when I was about 4 or 5 a young girl in a night dress would wake me up to play with her, I liked her, she was my friend. My mum used to find me out of bed and having conversations with nothing and put me back to bed. As I got older other things started to happen and I didn't find out until I was a teenager that one morning my parents came downstairs to find all the furniture in the kitchen, dining room upside down. At about 6 and as the oldest child it couldn't possibly have been me moving a whole dining table. We moved. In the next house things got weirder. My friend no longer woke me up but I would get the feeling that I was in the presence of someone else, not friendly either. The smell of lavender and tobacco would be strong in some area, my dog would bark and growl at one corner of the ceiling, our neighbors complained about the flute music coming from our garden, WTF. I can't play the flute, and other stuff. When I was 19 I moved out of that house. The taxi driver came to get me and my bags and stepped inside a hallway and took one look at me and said, this house is very haunted, or words to that effect, and said we needed to go. So I moved out and my mum hasn't noted anything bad happening since I've been gone so you know, it must be something about me. This was about 10 minutes away from the Enfield haunting house in N London dot 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 and no I was too small I didn't know anything about it until I was a teenager. There probably are explanations for all of the events but it is a weird coincidence that my auntie also had to have a priest bless her house because of what looked like an old man in a pirate hat standing at the end of her bed every night. DLDR. Weird stuff in North London. About three and a half years ago my mother miscarried. The day she lost her baby I was in high school and I suddenly had a bad feeling that something bad happened, I told my friend at the time that I thought something was wrong with my family and immediately after I threw up in the classroom, the teacher sent me home and my mother told me she had a miscarriage and I was just kind of like I knew it. I always had a bad feeling about this baby and couldn't really be happy that I'd be a bit so soon. Then about two years my mom was pregnant again and things were going good. She was supposed to give birth around the 20th of April. I think it was the 5th of April when I started to feel on edge, a day before I had a weird dream where my mom was in the hospital crying her eyes out. Then on the 7th I was staying at my new boyfriend's place when I had this sick feeling again and I immediately knew there was some bad thing going down again. He lived very close to the hospital so I ran there, he didn't have a car, and when I arrived at the info desk I said my pregnant mother was here, but the lady said there was no one with my mom's name registered. And boom in that moment an ambulance arrived in the emergency driveway and my mom wasn't there. She had complications but the baby and her lived. I never had this word foreshadowing anymore but it was creepily accurate. My house is old. What is currently the kitchen, master bedroom, and dining room was the original portion of the house built in the late 1800s around the time the community was being established. The house has grown significantly since then, and my parents bought the house in 1991. After a few years, my mother started having very bad night terrors. They eventually escalated to the point where my mother felt she could no longer stay in the home and we moved in 1999. My parents kept the home as a rent house, and I bought it off of them in 2007. I was pretty constantly rearranging the master bedroom, now my room, and after about a year, 
my bed ended up in the same position as my parents had theirs in during our last years when we all lived here. I started having night terrors of a man in old-timey clothing sitting on the edge of the bed with a knife. They were so real that I started sleeping with the light on, the light being on was the only difference between the dream and reality and helped me pull myself out of it. This went on for a few months until I moved the bed and they abruptly stopped. Later on that year, my night terrors came up in conversation with my mother. The look on her face was both recognition and pity. She described the man perfectly, then asked if my night terrors had developed into being buried alive. I said that they hadn't. She said yeah, I guess it took about a year and a half for that. I suddenly realized why my mother was so stressed out in those years and why she hates to visit my home. After that, I began trying my best to research the area, the home, everything I could get my hands on. It wasn't until this last weekend when at a music festival, an older gentleman asked me wasn't there a civil war in that area? And gave me my first real lead. I learned that there was a battle in 1862, approximately three decades before the original portion of the house was built, about 60 miles north of here, and that troops likely passed through here on their way to the Gettysburg of the West. Still researching, though, still have no concrete answers. Definitely do not miss those night terrors. TL, Doctor, my mom and I had the same night terrors 15 years apart, apparently because of the same bed placement in the master bedroom of the same house. During an evaluation flight at Palette Training had an image slash sense slash mental video? That my stepfather was going to die. I immediately went into panic attack mode. No history of this thought back to friends having these and took a few deep breaths and did my best to maintain altitude. I do not do well, however, I took some deep breaths and fought through the shaking and sweating and maintained safe flight. Called mom immediately after my flight before my IP had my results and told her to go see him and tell him I loved him and to thank him for me. He died within the day. My mother told me this has happened too many times to speak of this as coincidence, however, Putting pride into such a thing just causes more pain than is necessary. When I am given these moments of clarity about someone else's life, I use it to show love in whatever way I can and hope that it helps heal or bring comfort. Happened when I was 27. I have had a lot of experience with people dying around me throughout my short life so far and many strange slash creepy slash inexplicable things have happened around me. The most pervasive is a sense that I feel connections to other souls that come into contact with me. These contacts come in the form of hallucinations, smells, that sixth sense that we all share, dreams that include an individual, or emotions that arise from something other than myself. I have felt shadows of others emotional and physical pain, to say I feel their pain and anguish would be an insult. I have had dreams of trauma inducing situations that are happening in others memories. Visions of life and death. Seen physical transformations of people and animals that I can only describe as the projection of their spirit around their physical form. None of these can be objectively observed of course, so I told the most recent account of the most objective happening in this strange life I am leading. Please forgive the errors. I'm way too late this this party, but this is my story. Quite unbelievable, I know, but it happened to me nonetheless. When I was around 10 year old, we're talking about 2002 here, I used to hang around a lot on certain chat rooms. One day I met a guy, who was show to be very unique. It started out with normal conversation, but soon I learned that he could do things I could not possibly explain, even though I found myself pretty smart for my age. It was a normal chat room, no webcam, microphone nor whatever involved. I was able to speak to my screen, and he was able to write his response back. This is how we spend most of our time. But it didn't stop at this. I used to test him doing mind games, like thinking about a number in my head, and he would guess them correctly, not failing once. I even remember that after a successful strike I thought about infinite, and he went like that's not fair. Infinite is way too large. Anyhow, I was flabbergasted. I tried to tell my parents, 
but I think they thought it was child's imagination and eventually ignored it. I remained skeptical though so I constantly tried to test him. He could even tell me that my parents were watching Mr. Bean on the television, which was correct. Or that if I thought about the red curtains upstairs, he would correct me since they were blue. Eventually I just knew he was awesome, I could not explain how he was doing it, but he could see me, hear me, and read my thoughts with no error. He even gave me a mail address, but foolish me never saved it. That's something I regret every day of my life. We spent some time, later the chat room was disbanded and we never saw each other again. I've always been a skeptic, even at that young age. I knew I stumbled upon something incredible, so I made sure to remember the details. To this day I still have no clue what exactly happened. But I really hope I will find out sometime in my life though. I guess this would be considered creepy, and it's not something that I tend to talk about with much of anybody, so why not tell a bunch of strangers on the internet? It's a long read, but it's something that has followed me for many years. I have the unfortunate knack of being able to tell when someone I've come in contact with in some form commits suicide. The first major one was in high school. It was a Wednesday night, I was going to youth group with a friend, when I felt it. I couldn't stop crying. I couldn't sit still. I just knew that someone was going to kill himself. One of the youth pastors poo pooed me like I was doing teenage drama things, but my friend said that I don't deal in the drama. A lot of others in the youth group along with the pastor's wife prayed with me, albeit skeptically. I remember going home that night and laying awake in bed, hoping I was just losing my mind and that it was just hormones. The next day I go to school, and the announcement came over the closed circuit TV system my school had for announcements and school programs. The guy who normally did announcements, a senior, had killed himself. I looked at my friend along with someone else who was in the same youth group that went to my school. My friend said matter-of-factly that I knew. Not too long after that, I had another episode at home watching TV with my grandma. I felt really warm, but that same feeling of dread and sadness. I went to bed early, but couldn't sleep. I just cried. Next day I go to school, and found out the school nurse's son, who went to that school, had killed himself by self-immolation. I've had a few incidences of similar nature in later years, most of which I didn't know who it was, and never found out. The most recent one was in June of this year, sitting in my chair, on my computer, when I started choking on nothing, and sadness. Always the sadness. My husband asked me what happened, if he needed to give me the Heimlich, and I just made up something like my uvula was irritated. I haven't told him about the past incidences because, well, he's a very logic-driven person, and I can't explain these things where he'll understand or even accept. Anyway, late late that night I saw the announcement from a young man's roommate that he found said young man, friend of a friend and a gaming buddy, who had killed himself. It's not something I like to acknowledge, but I know, and it sucks. Once was a coincidence twice was another coincidence, but over 20 times in the past almost 20 years. It's tiring, it's sad, and I can't do a damn thing about it. When my brother and I were much younger we'd have to stay at my grandparents when my mom and dad went on vacation. This happened a lot as my dad's company would allow my mom to go with him on business trips. There was only ever one guest bedroom in my grandparents' room so my brother and I had to share a double bed. My brother always fought with me about who had to sleep near the edge of the bed as the other side was against the wall. I always lost and would settle in for a sleepless night. The only way I can describe it is every night an hour after I got into bed someone would sit down next to me. It never made me feel threatened but it was always creepy to be hummed songs and have my hair moved. One night I had had enough of it and had to get out of the room. As I walked out into the living room I saw my grandfather sitting in his favorite chair. He looked up at me and asked me if Ben and June had woken me. I quickly asked who Ben was and what he was talking about. His story quickly unfolded, during his first marriage he has a son who would have been 23 and engaged. 
him and his fiancée came to visit one night and slept in the room. They left late that night after arguing profusely. My grandfather overheard that June was pregnant and didn't want to scare Ben. On the way home they were hit by a drunk driver both passed away. I went back to sleep leaving my grandfather muttering for a good hour more out in the living room. Sometime after he went to sleep I felt the familiar presence sit on the side of the bed with me. To be clear my brother and I fought about it because he felt the same thing and never wanted to sleep on that side of the bed. He always assumed I never noticed it. Just posted a different story, but here's my other one. My grandmother had stopped using her front porch, front door before I was born. We always came through the side door. The porch stepped were partially blocked off with flower pots. In the summer, she would take the wood door off its frame, leaving just the screen door, but it was nailed shut and the doorway was blocked by this three-foot high wood and marble curio cabinet it took two people to move. My cousins and I are playing in the side yard one jot day when we see a guy in a brown suit and hat with a briefcase walking up the sidewalk. He turns to go on the front porch and we start yelling hey mister, come to the side door. He ignores us, and one cousin runs inside to let my grandmother know there's a guest. I am watching from the side yard still, still trying to get his attention. I watch him push the doorbell, broken, with a sign on it saying so, and stand there shuffling from foot to foot. I decide to run up to him, and I get to the steps of the porch, yelling mister. Hey mister. He doesn't acknowledge me. Suddenly he looks up at the door, like he is addressing someone inside, smiles and starts animatedly talking, but I can't hear what he is saying. I figure my grandmother us handling things and start to walk away when my cousin yells how'd he open the door? I turn around to see the guy disappearing through the open screen door. I was gobsmacked because I had never seen the door used, so I go running up on the porch to follow. I find the door sealed shut cabinet in place. Through the screen I can see my grandmother through the living room, in the kitchen. The cousin who was just outside comes running in through the side door. We are asking how the door was opened, who the man was, etc. My grandmother says there was no man, the door is sealed shut and she has no idea what we are talking about, and the cousin inside verifies that she didn't see him once in the house. Only afterwards did we realize it was 100 degrees out and it was weird this guy was wearing a full, heavier suit and hat. We tell this story to my uncle, whose word I don't fully trust, and he says that prior to my grandparents buying the house in the 60s, there was a guy who posed as a salesman to gain entry to homes, then assaulted the housewives. One of the houses he hit was my grandparents' house, which prompted the previous owner to sell. I was hanging out with a guy once in my small rural town. One of the only things to do in this town are to listen to music, drive around old country roads and eventually find a quiet spot where you can park and chat. We call this road riding and everyone does it. We were driving down a one lane road when we turned onto some gravel. The gravel eventually gave way to dirt until the dirt was just two tire tracks winding into the woods ahead of us. I asked him if he knew where he was going and he assured me that he has been to this spot many times before to think, write, etc. He was a really creative guy, always writing songs, recording, whatever project he could get his hands on. Anyway, we're sitting in the car in the middle of this little clearing and at this point you can't even see any semblance of a road. We were truly in the middle of nowhere. Once we park, he turns down the music and get to talking. What started out as talking about life and love, etc. eventually turned into discussing higher powers and enlightenment, there's more, but this has been almost a year ago now and I honestly can't recall the entire conversation. He was talking about how limited most people are in their thinking and about how he thinks there's so much more out there than we've come to know. Bear in mind that this was around 1 or 2 am and it's pitch black outside. We had turned off the headlights and the only light was coming from the dimly lit radio softly playing in the background. As he's talking I start to feel the hair on the back of my neck stand up for absolutely no reason. 
I wasn't particularly creeped by what he was talking about and found it rather interesting, actually. The air started to feel heavy and my body became incredibly aware that we were not alone. Something was sharing that clearing with us. The atmosphere around us felt electric, like something was manifesting itself. It was just a totally unnatural feeling that I've never experienced before. I felt the area succumb to overwhelming malice. About 30 seconds after I start to feel this way, he stops. He looks at me and says, can you feel that? I can't even speak so I just nod yes. The moment I nod yes, the entire clearing is lit up with a bright light. It wasn't a flash of light, like a lightning bolt, it was lit for a good 5 seconds before fading out, and it was steady. We stare at each other in panic and finally I shout at him, get the fuck out of here. He fiddles with the ignition trying to drive away and the whole time I just feel impending doom. I have never felt more like I was going to die than I did in that moment, and there wasn't even a visible threat. I've dealt with anxiety my entire life so I know what it's like to feel unnecessarily helpless all the time. My fight or flight reflexes go off on all cylinders randomly throughout the day. This was worse. This was the scariest moment of my life. I went from being totally happy that I was sitting in a car with this super good looking dude to fighting back sobs of terror. We made it out, and once we got to the main road all he could say to me was what was that? And my response was a head shake paired with I don't know. He dropped me off and we never talked about it again. This is the first time I've brought it up since then. I feel legitimately terrified and I clam up every time I start to tell someone about it. I feel like whatever was in that clearing with us did not want us there, it did not want us to talk about what we were talking about and it was giving us a warning. Edit, totally forgot to mention that the radio turned off with a flash of light. When we tried to drive away the car acted like the battery was dead for a moment before it finally decided to turn over. We hadn't been there long so there's no way the car died as we were talking, and it seems super coincidental that it would do that the moment this light filled the clearing. This was a brand new car. When I was about 12 I lived in a new high-rise building with my family that felt a little off. Several times when I was able to convince my parents that it's okay to go out and leave me alone to watch TV I would start hearing voices coming from the direction of the bedrooms that were identical to my family members as well as the distinct sound of my mother's high heels, clear as day. There was also this one time when I woke up very early morning, walked over to the sitting room to watch a show that only aired that time. Fifteen minutes after settling on the sofa I start hearing a knocking sound on the glass window a couple of meters behind me. Now we lived three floors up and there were no trees or wires or anything that could touch the glass. No sill for birds to stand on, and no other buildings in front of that window either. The knocking kept going on for a good 10 minutes before it suddenly stopped. I was too terrified to turn and look. It never happened again, during that time or any other time of day. That apartment also had a small guest bathroom that was shaped like a narrow corridor. When you stepped in there were two sinks on your right, then a small room at the end with a door with the toilet itself. That little room scared the bejesus out of everyone. It was fine when you were in it, using it. But the moment you turn your back to it or were leaving the bathroom this intense sense of absolute fear would set in and every fiber of your consciousness screamed run. Moved out a year later and thankfully never saw what was causing the noises. Still boggles my mind thinking about it, considering there was nothing on that land before the building was erected. Back when my wife and I were living in our old house, there were a variety of weird things that would happen. Nothing too major but enough for us to feel like something wasn't right. When I was alone I would hear footsteps on the second floor, dogs would go crazy barking at nothing in the corners of rooms. When I was in the shower one time I heard a baby crying my wife had just left with our newborn to go to the store so I jumped out figuring she needed something. Nope. No one there. One night my in-laws stayed the night and my father-in-law said he woke up in the middle of the night and saw a small child not mine standing in the corner of the guest room. Also started really bad episodes of sleep paralysis when I moved in there. But one of the weirdest things to happen to us was the night we went out for a walk. 
We weren't gone more than 15 minutes and our doors were locked. We came back inside and as we entered our dining room area one of our paintings roughly 2 feet by 2 feet, was sitting upright leaning up against the wall. Yes, it could have fallen off the hook and landed below, however it wasn't just below but also slid down about 5 feet to the very end of the wall. I asked my wife why she did that and swore to me she didn't move it. I also feel like it would have fallen flat if it fell off the wall. Who knows, maybe there was a gang of hoodlums breaking into people's houses and reorganizing their wall paintings. Two years ago I lived in an old renovated rental in downtown Boulder. Plenty of weird things happened, but the most frequent was our exterior doors shaking and doorknobs twisting on their own. The first time we assumed a lost homeless person or some plastered kid wandering to the wrong house after the bars closed. After a few times we left the blinds open and lights on at night to catch the culprit. One night it sounded like my roommate was struggling to get in our front door. I looked out the window and saw no one on the porch, but I could clearly see the doorknob twisting back and forth as if someone was trying to get out of the house. I walked towards the door from the inside and again saw the knob jolting back and forth and the door shaking violently. As I got two steps away it stopped. I wanted to investigate and as I touched the knob, our back door immediately started shaking the same way. I ran to the back of the house and found my other roommate cowering on the couch as we both watched this door, with a huge window and clearly no one behind it, shaking and doorknob twisting forcefully. Again it stopped as I ran over to it. This time I unlocked it and leapt outside to a quiet empty street. Landlord did not know much history of the house, but both of these doors had clearly been rammed open at one time BC the hinges and latches looked like they'd been blown out on the inside and replaced. Sort of lame compared to other posts on here, but I've got a small contribution. When I was moving out of my first apartment into a new two-bedroom app with my, now ex-fiancé, we went through storage looking for good boxes and totes to use to move junk. We came across an old military floor locker my parents had floating around from years before that had some of my childhood knickknacks in it. Had a cool look and could fit a bunch of junk in it, so we took it to the new apartment. We didn't finish moving stuff till around 2 a.m. the night, we ordered food, ate, and we both passed out on the couch with the remains of the meal laid out on the coffee table in front of us. Ex-fiancé was a heavy and long, sleeper so I was the first to wake up the next morning. All of the wrappers and remaining food had been cleared off the table and was laying all around the floor, some of it a few feet from the table. I was a bit spooked but figured she'd just kick the trash off in her sleep, she did occasionally have pretty rough reactions to dreams, so I picked up all the junk and trashed them. I didn't tell her about the trash till a couple days later when I came home to see my own of my posters had been pulled off the wall and was on the other side of the room leaning up against the footlocker. Naturally I asked if she'd move it, when she said no I told her about the food wrappers and we joked about there being a ghost around. There were several more instances of stuff falling, always around the footlocker. Upon further inspection of the footlocker we noticed there was a stenciled on name Private William something spacing on the last name ADM, so every time something fell or we felt an especially chilly breeze I'd strike up a conversation with Ghost Billy, figuring that being dead must be kinda lonely so we'd keep him company. Anyway, I now have the footlocker back at my parents place storing a shit ton of movie and game cases. Whenever I'm back home visiting and see the box I always say hi to Ghost Billy and ask him if he's spoken met anyone new recently. When we were teenagers, my brother seriously began pursuing his aspirations as a stage actor. And for that reason, he seemed to constantly be rehearsing, which often meant singing echoing through our house at odd hours. His voice, which largely gets him his acting gigs today, was, and still is, loud and very distinctive. One Saturday morning, I woke up at around 10 a.m., and my parents had already gone out for the day. I had somewhere to be, and so I went about my morning routine. But while I was brushing my teeth in the bathroom mirror, my brother started singing downstairs. I couldn't tell you what song it was, and the sound was muffled. But that wasn't atypical. You see, our childhood home had a finished basement 
and he sometimes practiced down there. And due to the place's age, the walls and floors were so thin, sound traveled pretty well through each story. I figured maybe he was hanging around the basement landing. In any case, I decided it was far too early for that shit and yelled down the upper landing for him to shut up. He kept going? I yelled again, and he stopped. And that's when I realized my brother wasn't even home that day. He had left with my parents two hours earlier for a doctor's appointment. I didn't know what to do, so I returned to my bedroom and just stayed there for a little while. The singing didn't start again, and eventually, I ventured downstairs. The basement door was closed, and the lights were off. My brother and parents arrived home shortly thereafter. Still can't explain it, and I sort of chalked it up either to my imagination or to maybe someone who sounded similar singing outside. We did live in an active neighborhood at the time. Nobody ever believes me when I tell this story. But this is Reddit so I can't tell it without people thinking I'm crazy. I used to live with an aunt in Texas. I had mentioned some of my paranormal experiences to her and she confirmed that yes, she saw the shadow figures in my grandmother's house growing up too, and so did my cousin. Well, since I'd moved to a whole different state, I thought that would be the last time I'd see them. Nope. I was a weird kid, so at night when I was thirsty, I drank out of the bathroom sink, not wanting to wake my aunt. One night, while I did this, I saw a shadow in the mirror. I felt like my heart had stopped. I slowly looked behind me and out the bathroom door and nothing was there. I shook it off and decided to walk to the kitchen to look at the stove and see what time it was. I immediately knew something was off. We had what was essentially a sunroof you'd see on a car in our dining room ceiling. It let in some moonlight at night so the dining room wasn't too dark. But I couldn't see it and it was hard to navigate the chairs. I looked up and saw that it was covered. As soon as I saw this, a shadow moved across the ceiling and the sunroof was no longer covered. I turned to go back to my room, no longer caring what time it was. Then something pulled my hair so hard my head snapped back. I ran to my room and eventually fell asleep. When I woke up the next morning, I noticed that some of my hair had been ripped out. I was pissed. Well, later I wanted some ice cream. Guess what I found in the freezer? A chunk of my hair. Two things. When I was five my dad lived with his girlfriend in this old ranch house in Loomis. It was built in the 1800s and was a rarity in California in that it had both an attic and a basement as well as a porch, the favorite haunt of raccoons. The basement was full of glass jars of home canned goods, mostly beets. The staircase up to the attic was very narrow and not well lit, and that was my room when I stayed over. Before this, he had rented a room which had been converted from a parlor. The previous owners had used the parlor to hold a wake for their 12-year-old. I had one of those books where you push a button and it makes a noise. It was some book about a cricket, and the button would make a chirp chirp, chirp 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 chirp. Sound when pressed. Before leaving for dinner one night, we made sure to put all the books up off the floor my dad helped me clean everything up so it looked properly cleaned. Everything was absolutely up off the floor. We were gone for a few hours, and no one else was in the house. No one else could have been everything was locked, this place was pretty out of the way, and the whole household was together. Yet as soon as we stepped in the door a familiar sound floated down from the attic chirp chirp, chirp 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 chirp. My dad ran up the stairs to find the book open in the middle of the floor in the attic room, chirping away. The house is boarded up now, and no one has lived in it for almost 20 years. My mom had a pretty ordinary house in suburbia with her husband, and my room was on the front corner of the house. On the other side of one of my outside walls was a pond that had fallen into disuse and partially reclaimed by nature. Aside from that, the whole place was incredibly, mind-numbingly, normal. You ever have that feeling like someone is watching you? You can feel their eyes just burrowing into the back of your head, and it's just incredibly unsettling? Well, 
I was alone in my absolutely normal room when I felt that. So intensely, I couldn't bring myself to turn and face the pond side wall. I, an occult loving cynical teenager, was terrified. I could feel something watching me. I can't prove it, of course, but I know there was something there in the weedy darkness. I slept with the lights on that night, much to the annoyance of my mother and her husband. For years after, I felt that every time I was in any dark, open place. As soon as I got into a room and closed the door I was safe, but I always felt like something was there. Maybe it was just nerves, but I've been afraid of the dark since that night over 10 years ago. My experience could be explained scientifically but I'll just go with it. When I was 19 I would stay up until 3 and just browse Facebook and smoke before I headed to bed, this was my nightly routine because I worked second shift. Well one day I was alone like usual and I was really tired. I was determined to stay up until 3 am and then head to bed. 3 rolls around I have my last cigarette and head to bed. As I slowly drift asleep I start hearing something whisper my name. Um I think it's a car passing by so I don't pay any attention. I hear I again. Um but closer. Alright must be my mind playing tricks on me since I'm tired. And as I started nodding off into my wonderful bliss of sleep I hear it again but now that voice was next to my ear. Um I'm creeped out and I reach for my headphones that's plugged into my phone and blast my music until I fall asleep. I am really skeptical about these kinds of things and I'm pretty sure it was some sort of sleep disorder like lucid dreaming, paralysis or I was just too tired to comprehend my awareness. But then again it could have been something else. I was in a classroom with my classmate before actual class time. We were playing you know 1v1 using the teacher's desk. There were three people inside the room, me, classmate, and some girl with braids who we didn't know. We just let her stay since it was common for students to stay and charge their phones in classrooms that didn't have classes going on in it. The classroom assignment lady from the business department went inside the room to post a sheet of paper that says we were gonna have to change classrooms. We were in J406 and we needed to transfer to J402, at the other end of the hall. We got up, packed the cards and headed for the classroom we were assigned to. Every classroom has two doors and my friend and I, were racing to be the first one inside, braided girl ran too. It was weird why she was following us since she wasn't part of our class. My friend and I were catching our breaths with our hands on each of the doorknobs of the doors. Braided girl casually walked over to me and placed her hand above mine, which was still holding the doorknob, and carefully turned it to open the door. Now for an 18 year old whose interactions with women is non-existent. I was stunned. Braided girl went in and my friend on the other door was grinning. Friend, lucky bastard me, fuck you friend, go chase after your newfound girl. We decided to get inside the room and I was excited since I wanted to check out braided girl dot 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 but she wasn't in the room. She was nowhere to be found. It was impossible for her to get out of the room without passing by us since we stayed at the door before going in. She couldn't have gone out the window since we were on the fourth floor and there was no ledge to step on. She just disappeared. TL, doctor, I got touched by a ghost girl. Finally a chance to tell this story. So, I was a young kid at the time, probably no older than 5 or 6. So this must have happened in the late 90s. I remember that in my room, I had an old Windows 98 computer that I had some basic kids games on, and one of them was called the Dinosaur Museum. It was a really simplistic game, in which you had several different kinds of dinosaur and you could reskin them in different colors and effects, and I think there were a few little mini games as well. Anyway, when you started a game up it would say welcome to the Dinosaur Museum in a loud announcer's voice. So, one night I was playing this with my parents and when bedtime came, we turned the computer and monitor off and I went to sleep. Anyway, late into the night I was woken up by this booming voice saying welcome to the dinosaur museum. I looked over and somehow, the PC had turned itself on and opened the game and was just playing to itself, 
and the monitor had turned itself on and turned the volume to full. I was freaked out and went to get my parents, but as I recall my mum just hushed me and turned it off and I went back to sleep. I thought I'd imagined this but recently I brought it up to my brother and mum and they both remember it happening too, so that's probably the weirdest thing I can remember. Also, this isn't my story but I remember in one of these threads someone posted my all-time favorite creepy reddit story this dude was walking through an old junkyard in Germany and as they walked past one of the old rusted cars, it started trying to turn over as if someone was trying to start it. When the op checked it out, it had no ignition, the dash was gone and he could see that the wires were sparking by themselves. As I recall it didn't have any wheels but the drum brakes were trying to turn as well. That story gave me goosebumps the first time I read it, but I haven't been able to find it since. Hopefully someone knows the one I mean. This incident happened when I was 12 years old. It was Christmas holidays, and I was typically bored, and trying to engage myself in a book in my drawing room. My mother and sister were in bedroom busy in their own respective work. Father was at his office. I was getting immersed in my book, then suddenly I got a feeling that someone was standing in my balcony. It was pretty odd, for my floor contained of three apartments in my former apartment complex. Both the families were at their homes. We are alone in the floor, and why would someone come and stand in the corridor at such point of time late at night? Curiosity sent to the peephole on the main door. I saw a shadowy figure, seemingly a woman in her fifties, plump, draped in a nylon sari. I was surprised to know that she seemed quite familiar. But at that moment it didn't strike my mind. I stood there continuously observing her for about five minutes. She hadn't made a single moment from the spot. She was looking out in the corridor, stood near the door of the last apartment. The wind blew her sari's end at a constant. Not a movement. I decided to open the door, and ask the lady about her business. I slowly unlocked the door, without removing my eye from the peephole. The moment I opened the door, there was nobody. Not a sound in the corridor, not even steps of a person walking away. I went back to my chair and book, wondering all the time, who it must have been. Suddenly, a brain wave. I remembered it might have been the grandma who lived in the last flat of the floor. She looked the same, the plump body structure, the thin plaited grey hair, seemingly plump face. She was a friendly woman, though I rarely spoke to her except exchange of greetings and smiles when we came across each other. She was quite friendly with my mother though, often engaged in discussions and chatting on various topics from food, series to children's psychology. I was often invited to her grandchildren's birthday parties, which I hesitatingly went on my mother's persistence. She was a kind lady, but, she had a queer habit. At the evenings, she would stand at the corner looking outside and rapt attention without a moment for long hours, only to move and talk when called for. I was so used to see her standing there that if someday she wouldn't be there, I would find the corridor out looking. It must have definitely been her, of course. But something happened lately, she was ill, terribly ill. She wouldn't come out at all. If she did, it was for visiting the doctor, or to the diagnostic center for tests. Nothing cured her, nothing even told her what she was suffering from. Finally, an ordinary physician was able to tell her disease jaundice, a very severe case. The so-called specialists weren't able to tell it blaming her diabetes controlling tablets for covering the symptoms her skin wasn't yellowed. But it was too late. She was dying. She was hospitalized for a week for the time being. Everybody sympathized with her family in the apartment complex. Later, she died. Now it's her thirteenth day of her mourning. Her family was off to her village for the last rites. Wait she is dead. This dawned on me leaving me shocked. It was her and she is dead. I was shocked, I immediately rushed to my mother and caught her, much to her surprise. I didn't tell her what I saw, for, I knew, she wouldn't believe me. In Hinduism, 13th day is the last day of mourning of dead, where the spirits are finally come to leave for heavens. She had come here to see her favorite spot in the corridor for one last time. I many times tried to interpret the situation rather scientifically, 
but I failed to explain how can someone move away so quickly. Why was that particular lady standing in same spot, same posture, looking same as that grandmother? I'm still never able to explain myself. What do you feel? My family lived in a creepy house on a military base for two years. The house was built in the 1920s and renovated in the 1980s. Myself, my brother, and my mom all had freaky things happen. We never talked about them until a few years later. We each thought ours were isolated incidents and didn't mention them to anyone else. Me. Before moving into this house, our family dog and cat would always sleep on my bed with me at night. In this house, they refused to even come down the hall. My room had access to the crawl space under the house in my closet. I'd hear her thunking noises from my closet at night like something was trying to open the crawl space door but couldn't. Freaked me out so I moved some heavy boxes on top of the door just in case. I would hear the thunking and the stuff in the boxes waddling around. More boxes. I put the cat in the closet once to see what he would do and the poor guy was hissing and spitting like mad. I opened the door and he ran out like his tail was on fire. This was the most relaxed cat ever so it was definitely out of character for him. Hated my room. Mom. She was home alone and she though she heard the front door open. She assumed it was my dad coming home for lunch. Called out a hello and didn't hear anything so she went to the front door. No dad. She walks around the house and doesn't find him so she just figured she was mistaken. The next week the same thing happens. Third week and when she comes to see if it's dad, the front door is wide open. Mom freaks out and leaves the house to run errands. This repeats once a week for three months. She would frequently find doors open and lights on that she swears were not that way when she left the room. Brother. Poor brother though. He took the maid's room in the house because he wanted privacy. It was a tiny bedroom in the back with the small attached bathroom. He heard people talking while in the shower. He saw black ghost-like figures in the mirror. His bedroom door would open on its own. He'd wake up in the middle of the night to a shadowy man standing over his bed that would disappear when the lights were turned on. So he started sleeping with the lights on. Leaving the TV on at night. He'd wake up and everything would be turned off. And no it wasn't my parents. He'd feel hands on his chest and wake up to red handprints. I'm sure there are more but these are only the ones I can remember. Fuck that house. This is an unexplained experience that I had years ago. There doesn't seem to be much obvious meaning or reason to it. It was the middle of the afternoon and I was home alone. As I am walking down the hall to go back to my bedroom to get a book I start to feel uneasy. Something is seriously wrong, but I can't quite put my finger on what. At the end of the hall is a bathroom with the door open. The shower has a sliding door that's a full mirror. About halfway down the hall I begin to fixate on my reflection. As I get closer everything appears normal. But I begin to realize this is the source of my unease. The t-shirt I am wearing is dominated by a large silk screened graphic. It's colorful and takes up the entire front of the shirt and even wraps around the sides. My reflection is wearing a plain black t-shirt. I pause, and shake my head, then refocus on my reflection. Same thing, my reflection is wearing a plain black t-shirt. I take another step forward, pause again. Look down to make sure I am wearing the shirt I knew I put on that morning. Sure enough, large colorful graphic plastered across my chest and torso. After taking one more look at the mirror to confirm that the reflection was inaccurate, I turned tail and ran to my neighbor's house. I've had a couple alien experiences but I've told them on Reddit before. So I'll tell another story. When I was 8 I went on vacation to see my grandparents interstate by myself, about a 13 hours drive from my hometown. During my trip I became incredibly sick and had some insane fever dreams. The last dream I had was I was at my other grandparents house and my mom and dad were there. Mom and dad had recently split and there was much fighting between custody of me, and they gave my the ultimatum in the dream that I had to choose one to live with but the other had to die. 
I couldn't choose because I loved both my parents and said I choose grandparents dog to die, and if not him, I choose grandpa. My rationalization was a dog's life is not equal to a human's and grandpa had lived longer than anyway and was close to death anyway, he was only 64 at the time but at that age I thought he was a very old man. I got better and came home two weeks later. Mum told me while I was gone that my grandparents dog had passed away in his sleep, and also that grandpa went to the doctor and is very very sick, lung cancer. Grandpa died a year or two later. I never told anyone about my dream due to the sensitivity of the matters and my parents both being very open to the idea of spirituality and paranormal due to our alien experiences. I feel no guilt, because even if I did have relation to the deaths I was at in a pretty tough position for an 8 year old. I posted this a long time ago in R, paranormal so I'll just copy and paste it. I will start by saying my grammar sucks so sorry in advance. When I was growing up in Chicago on the north side in Rogers Park I had my worst encounter with what I would say most creepy demon encounter. We moved in when I was very young into our first house. I got to live in the basement and it was nice at everything for me down there even a bathroom so would want that bad a war under 10 so I wouldn't have to go upstairs in the dark. I had a big closet too and big windows to let all the morning sun in. After a week of sleeping in there I would hear strange noises coming from the closet and sometimes what sounded as if the door would be opening to the closet so I never looked just kept my eyes closed. I put the noises to mice making noises because we found a lady living before us fed them all the time, so the next night comes around and I hear the door open. I woke up and this time the room smelled like death and I just turn around to see what is going on and as I look at the door opening more I see a clown what appears to be 4 feet tall and with sharp teeth like that motherfucker it I was just terrified and froze and could not move as the terror runs trough my whole body. I start to scream and my parent come rushing down. I tell them what happened and they think it's just a nightmare. My mom stayed with me the next day and as we fell asleep the door start opening and you hear scratches and weird noises coming from there. Just like the day before the clown appears smiling and the smell of death filled the room again my mom was awake and saw everything and started to scream at it to go and started praying and commanding it to leave and just like that it disappeared when she mentioned God's name. The next day all of her church friends come and start praying and bless the whole house and we never seen that thing again. From time to time we still hear noises but that was the worst for me. A few weeks ago I was staying with my mom, grandfather and uncle in a small cottage in Cape Cod, Massachusetts probably built sometime in the late 60s to early 70s. My mother and I were staying in a room with two twin beds about six feet apart on each side of a small room. We had driven there late and everyone was settling down to go to bed around 3 a.m. Anyway, the very first night then we were there, it was around 3.30 and the lights were off and my mom was already asleep. Now I know 100% that I was tired at this moment but was completely entirely awake. I'm getting chills just thinking about this again. I was laying on my side in the direction of the bed facing my mother's and suddenly a blink and the next thing I knew, a pitch black shadowy figure with womanly features with hair hanging down appeared in front of me in clear as day whispers. A, S S H H H. And for a short moment I thought it was my mom, but when I looked she was asleep and the figure was gone before I could react. I spent the next two hours freaked the living fuck out practically having an anxiety attack with my heart racing trying to play off what I just saw. My mother doesn't believe in the supernatural and says it was my imagination but I'm a college age man and know for a fact that I was completely awake when I saw and heard what I did. Needless to say. I felt incredibly uncomfortable in the room the next three nights we were there and slept facing the wall, not even daring to flip over and face that way again. And I swear I heard light footsteps the next few nights in that room, all aboard the Nope train. It was All Saints Day and me, my parents, along with other relatives, were visiting the graves of my grandparents. This happened when we were walking home from the cemetery along with other people who came that day. It wasn't really that crowded and there were some gaps along the crowd of people. 
I'm not sure if there was a full moon that night but it wasn't really that dark. Plus, there were lamp posts every few blocks. We were walking at a normal pace then suddenly I just stop. Because one more step, I would have bumped into this kid who was glued to his position and just standing there facing me. There was a lamp post a few feet behind him so when I sidestepped, I could see his shaved head, his white sleeveless shirt, and his jersey shorts. However, I couldn't make out the whole front of his body nor his face. It was as if it was all blacked out. Now this was all happening in a span of a few seconds wherein I stop, sidestep to the left while looking if he'll move, then continue walking. My cousin was also to my left and not really that far from me so I almost bump, again, into him. He gave me this puzzling look and asked what happened to me. I said, I almost bumped into that kid. More puzzling looks, what kid? The kid I almost bumped into, the one who wasn't moving. As I say this we both look back and I see that the kid's still there but my cousin isn't. Probably because we were still walking forward while trying to look back and there were a few people behind us. Maybe that caught his attention? Not sure. I look at him incredulously thinking why can't you see this kid? He's standing like a statue. I look back again, and he was gone. Gave me the creeps until now, I don't really know what happened if that kid was just playing pranks. T.L. Doctor, went home from the cemetery, almost bumped into this non-existent kid, who was probably playing pranks. It was All Saints Day and me, my parents, along with other relatives, were visiting the graves of my grandparents. This happened when we were walking home from the cemetery along with other people who came that day. It wasn't really that crowded and there were some gaps along the crowd of people. I'm not sure if there was a full moon that night but it wasn't really that dark. Plus, there were lamp posts every few blocks. We were walking at a normal pace then suddenly I just stop. Because one more step, I would have bumped into this kid who was glued to his position and just standing there facing me. There was a lamp post a few feet behind him so when I sidestepped, I could see his shaved head, his white sleeveless shirt, and his jersey shorts. However, I couldn't make out the whole front of his body nor his face. It was as if it was all blacked out. Now this was all happening in a span of a few seconds wherein I stop, sidestep to the left while looking if he'll move, then continue walking. My cousin was also to my left and not really that far from me so I almost bump, again, into him. He gave me this puzzling look and asked what happened to me. I said, I almost bumped into that kid. More puzzling looks, what kid? The kid I almost bumped into, the one who wasn't moving. As I say this we both look back and I see that the kid's still there but my cousin isn't. Probably because we were still walking forward while trying to look back and there were a few people behind us. Maybe that caught his attention? Not sure. I look at him incredulously thinking why can't you see this kid? He's standing like a statue. I look back again, and he was gone. Gave me the creeps until now, I don't really know what happened if that kid was just playing pranks. T.L. Doctor, went home from the cemetery, almost bumped into this non-existent kid, who was probably playing pranks. I've been hoping for a chance to tell this story. It's not exactly supernatural, but is very much downright creepy. This happened some years ago when I had the iPhone 4s, so either 2012 or 2013. I was lying in bed when I received a phone call. I forget who exactly it was, or what exactly they claimed to be offering, but it was fairly obviously a scam of some sort. Well, not obviously enough. This lady was asking me for various details of personal information dot 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 which I was giving for some reason. I believe I've read about how people are willing to give up all sorts of information as long as they are asked, and asked by someone with some illusion of power or something like that. Well, I readily handed out my name, email address dot 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 possibly confirmed my phone number as well. It wasn't until she asked for my home address that my common sense kicked in. I didn't need this lady or anyone affiliated with her making house calls, or even so much as sending me garbage mail. 
Why do you need my address? I asked. So I can insert whatever the fuck she claimed to be doing here. She replied. It sounded reasonable dot 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 even made sense to some degree assuming what she claimed to be doing was legit. But I no longer had the blind faith to hand out my information in hopes that it was. My exact location was pretty much the last detail I was still hanging on to, and I had now decided not to give it out. Nothing too creepy has happened yet, right? Obviously, just politely decline and hang up. Yeah, well, that's where I ran into creepy as fuck trouble. Now, she was very liberally using my name every time she said something to me. After I said nothing to her last statement, she repeats, Can I have your address, Kai Bakura? I say nothing and take my phone away from my head and tap the end call button on the screen. But nothing happens. The touch screen is now completely unresponsive. I'm unable to end my call. I vaguely acknowledge how easily it would have been not too long previously, when I could have just shut my cool as fuck Motorola Razr and that would be it, still not saying anything, I hold the lock button until the slide to power off option appears. Of course, my touch screen is still unresponsive, so this was not a solution after all. Thinking back on it now, I could have just kept holding the lock button until the phone was forced to power off. But I guess I wasn't aware of this feature at the time. I had experienced the stupid unresponsive touch screen issue before during phone calls. This wasn't the first time I was unable to end phone calls on my end. I knew that once the call was ended, by the other person, touch screen functionality would return. But typically, the people I'm talking to aren't completely intent on keeping me on the line until I give away all my secrets. I continued to say nothing. Not only had I decided not to give up my address, but I wasn't even going to give away any more of my voice. So I lay my phone on the bed near me and bury my head in the pillow, waiting for her to give up and end the call. But she didn't. I could hear her, a short distance away from me, still talking. Can I have your address, Kai Bakura? I ignored her and stay laying there. What's your address, Kai Bakura? I've been silent for quite a while now. Any normal person would have likely given up on the conversation by now, but not the she witch. She's still repeating her request as I search my brain for a solution. I find one, and it's fairly last resort. I take a trick from my experience jailbreaking my eye devices. I seize my phone, which is still transmitting this attempt to ascertain my location, and hold the lock and home button until my phone is put in DFU mode. This essentially breaks it temporarily. I guess you put your phone in this mode when you are recovering your device, as well as for some jailbreaks. Finally my link to this woman was severed. I brought my phone back from DFU mode and everything was fine after that. I wondered if she had somehow had the ability to disable ending the phone call. I now figure it was just a coincidence that the unresponsive touch screen glitch happened during that call, it didn't happen every phone call. That's about it. It was just really creepy to be lying there in the dark as she repeated, over and over again, her request for my address. I never got another phone call about it dot 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 never got so much as an email. Maybe it wasn't a scam, and I missed out on the chance of a lifetime. However, judging from her willingness to talk to thin air for a couple minutes, I doubt it. I've posted this before under a different handle. But the weirdest supernatural, unexplained thing that ever happened to me was in high school. A friend was holding a Halloween, birthday combo party. I was upstairs with her and another friend, the upstairs floor of her house consisted of two bedrooms across from each other, and a bathroom in between. I was standing at the top of the stairs. About to go back down to the party, my friend was in the room to my right, and the room to my left was full of moving boxes. They had just moved in a few weeks prior to the party. A bunch of my friends were standing at the bottom of the stairs, chatting. This glowing, cloudy shape, hovering about a foot off the ground, came out of the room full of boxes to my left. It had a very strange quality to it, translucent but solid looking. I couldn't see any discernible features, however. It was just this odd little clown thing. It moved past my legs and quickly descended the stairs, 
then rounded into the middle of the living room and vanished. Every single person at the party, especially the people at the bottom of the stairs, stopped talking and watched this thing float down the stairs and into the living room. There was a completely stunned silence. I looked down at the people at the bottom of the stairs and managed to squeak out, Did you guys see that? Everyone nodded with super wide eyes. The party eventually resumed and nothing else happened for the rest of the night. Not really creepy, but it was truly a bizarre occurrence. No explanation for it whatsoever, and about 15 people saw this thing, and they all still remember it. Posted before, but I will share again. A bit of a lengthy read, and I am 100% serious with this story. It was Labor Day weekend of 2008, that Friday night I went to my buddy's house for a few beers and we watched Drain Spotting. I got back to my place about 11 p.m., I played with my turntables for about an hour and crashed. Now at the time, I was living with my parents, so that night it was me, my brother, mom and stepfather home. Now when I go to bed, I always left my phone on my desk, which was kitty corner from my bed, as so if it vibrated I could hear it. It was a Nokia and we all know how loud their vibrate is. So anyways, at 3.12 am I am woken up by the light from my phone. Now, my chair was pushed in under the desk, so I couldn't actually see the phone, but I could see the light emitting from it. I crawl out of bed, pull the chair out and check my phone. No missed call, text, voicemail, nothing. The phone had just seemingly lit up for no apparent reason. At this point, I go back to my bed and set my phone on the floor beside it. At this point, I am still sitting up, and I notice that both my computer monitors on my desk, their power lights are flashing independently from each other, in no particular pattern. This is starting to confuse me, on what exactly is happening. I look ahead, and my dish cable box is doing the same thing, the LED on it is blinking. The computer monitors and the cable box are on different outlets. At this point, I think something is wrong with the power. So I get up and open my bedroom door to look down the hall. My mother always left a lamp on in the living room. It was on normally, the light was not flickering. I go back to bed at this point. Now it being September, it was still relatively warm out. I had my window open the majority of the way, and the blinds cracked a good few inches. I get the most overwhelming sensation that I am being watched. Huge lump in my throat hair on the back of my neck standing up. At this point I sink deeper into my bed and pull the covers closer to my face. Now this part, every time I recall it, type about it, or speak to others about it, I still get chills. My walls seemingly starting to make noise, like someone was scratching at them with their fingernails. All four walls and the ceiling. This loud, dragging noise. I'll never forget it. I don't know how I managed to fall asleep that night, but I did. The next morning I asked my brother, who shares a wall with me if he heard anything. He did not. This girl I was sort of seeing at the time was super religious and when I told her what had happened, she began to get teary-eyed when I told her the story and never wanted me to tell, talk to her about it again. I did some research on the subject of demons, ghosts and with what had happened. The time being around 3 a.m. and the lights flickering, I guess this is called the devil's hour as Christ was crucified at 3 p.m., and demonic activity is more heightened at 3 a.m. as sort of a mockery to Christ. I'm 29 years old now, and let me tell you, that is the most scared I have ever been in my life. Part of me wants to have it happen again though, just to experience something like that, again. Thanks for reading. I've posted this before. When I was in college, a good friend of mine, John, lived in an apartment above a funeral home. A small group of us frequently gathered at his place because a lot of us lived with our parents, commuter school. We knew where the spare key was and frequently let ourselves in. One cloudy November afternoon, I got out of class early, like 4.30, and let myself in. I was pretty sure one of his roommates was home so I shouted up hey Ben, it's you professor. No response, but that was typical. Nevertheless, I just knew there was someone else home. I sat down at the dining room table and started doing some homework. 
Suddenly I looked up and saw someone sitting in the rocking chair by the living room window. At this point, it's closer to 5 p.m., and there's very little light left in the apartment. I didn't turn the lights on when I got in because at that time it was still light. So I'm squinting into the other room and saying hey, Ben? What are you doing just sitting there? I sort of sensed the figure turn to look at me, and the figure just slowly dot 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 slowly dot 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 faded dot 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 and I wasn't sure I had even seen it, but I felt totally creeped out. I ran up the stairs to his roommate's bedroom, knocked. Nope. Nobody home but me. Just then, Ben and John come up the stairs into the apartment. I'm standing wild-eyed in the middle of the living room, and they're like what the hell, dude? I tell them I am pretty sure there was a ghost just in here. They're like oh, is that all? Yeah we get that shit all the time. At first it was creepy, but now it's just whatever. And went about their business. I totally thought they were fucking with me for years. A couple of years ago I ran into John and brought up that story. He said he didn't remember the episode with me that day, but that yeah, they used to see weird shit all the time in that apartment. This is actually my friend's story but I trust them and they all seemed pretty visibly shaken by what happened. After we graduated high school we went on a trip to Samui, a popular island in Thailand for tourists to go to, and during the day we would just mess around while waiting to go out at night. We rented motorcycles and rode around the island but on the day that this happened, I was too lazy to go out so I stayed behind with some other friends. When they got back they told us about how they eventually got a bit hungry and lost and that they stumbled upon some old lady by the road. They asked for directions to anywhere they could grab food and all she did was point towards the direction of the road. They said thanks and rode on that way until they got to what looked like a hotel with a restaurant. They were greeted by a reception and directed towards the restaurant. The place seemed perfectly fine but as they explored the place, they noticed that something was off, the place was completely empty. It looked like it was abandoned even though when they got there it seemed to be in perfect condition. They got out of there as fast as possible and when they met and asked the locals about the place, they all said that the place has been closed for years. These friends of mine are the adventurous type but they looked terrified when they got back to the hotel. I worked at an amusement park, in a saloon themes bar. One night we were closing and heard some weird clicking. We looked around and noticed the lights and cameras were all just moving, long, big movements followed by short twitchy movements, by themselves. It was really kind of strange, and it was just my boss and I in there. We were kinda creep out, but we just kind of brushed it off. We left for the night and we both verified, protocol, doors were locked. The two of us opened the next morning. We went in and there were some weird things. Decorations had been moved, one example, we had necklace things on our registers, one was on the floor, one was on the back bar, and the last one had been put on another register. One of our steps had been flipped around, those suckers are heavy. And possibly the weirdest was that a tip bucket, which was locked away the night before, was sitting out, on a hook, under the bar filled with water with some coins on the bottom. We thought someone had played a strange trick on us, but nobody had come in after we left, we were one of the last ones to leave in our area. They were very strict for that location because of there being alcohol, and there was nothing on the log sheet, and out boss said no one radioed in, it's marked down in the office, to be let in. There are stories that the saloons in the park are haunted, and after this, and a few things at the other saloon. I believe it. Also, never saw the lights, camera move like that again. When I was about 11 minus 12 years old I lived with my mother in a large two-story house in Tucson, Arizona on the outskirts of town below the hills with a few acres of wild desert around us. We originally housed my grandmother in the first floor and my brother lived with us on the second. Due to family issues they had moved out during that time. My mother worked long shifts and her work as a nurse out in a prison a few hours out of town. She was rarely home with me and I was generally a solitary child to begin with. 
I generally just wanted to stay in my room and play my video games and mess on my computer. When my supernatural experiences happened, it was summer. I remember sleeping throughout the day when it was in the 105-110 range and waking up to live at night because it was so hot. My mother hated trying to cool such a large house so we didn't use the AC and just ran large fans in both our rooms. I didn't have class at this time so I got to sleep whenever. During the nights when I was awake, I would make my way to the kitchen or the bathroom to take a bath. I love me my baths, and some nights there was this thing that would follow me in the crawl space above us on the second floor. From the sound of it, it sounded like it would reach out in front of itself and drag its body forward to move around. It would follow me from my room, down the hall, to the kitchen. Slowly of course, it couldn't keep up with a regular walking speed. And then if I doubled back before it got to its original destination, it would stop turn around and follow me to my next location. I remember going to take a bath and sitting in the water hearing it crawling from my bedroom to the bathroom, to the light fixture directly above me. I remember giggling to myself and saying don't you be watching me while I'm naked. It never made any other sounds and I never heard it go on its own unless it was following me. I asked my mother and brother if they'd ever hear anything like that and they told me no. They say it's an animal but nothing would be able to survive with how hot it gets up there. There just no way. I've opened that crawl space, it makes your throat feel stuck it's so hard to breath in that heat. Plus what? A 100 pounds rats up there? I dropped it when I saw they thought I was just making things up. These experiences never occurred to me to be anything strange until I got older. I don't really remember why or when it stopped but it wasn't every night to begin with. On another note, I always had trouble with being bruised in my sleep. My friends always joked I had a rape ghost, you know young cranny teen humor, living at home and that's why I always had such bad inner thigh bruises. To the point you could place your fingertips over them and make out a hand print. No idea if it's related but it's another thing from that age range I never really understood. Edit. First of all, sorry for the format. Little intro, since I was little I've always seen or felt beings, mostly felt, but as I grew up I just credited it to me being a scaredy cat, even though my sister sometimes also heard and felt things, steps, voices, smells, dark figures, etc. Also, when this happened I had to sleep in our duplex upper floor because a really old lady, relative of us, was sleeping in my room. She breathed like a rusty wind metal orchestra of hell and farted like it was the end of the world. Sleeping near her was a torture so I didn't have other option. One side of our duplex had one of those sofa beds and that's where I slept. Now to the story. One September night when I was 18 I was trying to commit suicide, after years and years of abuse, depression and all that follows it. I had stolen my father's new ceramic knife. It was unused and pure white so I thought it would be the best to cut my veins. The problem is that it takes a lot of courage to get yourself in a suicide attempt but even more to actually do the action that will end your life. Cut your veins, take pills, jump off a building, so I went back and forth from the bathroom to the room, crying my eyes out and knife in hand for two hours. In the last round I made from the bathroom to the room I sat on the bed couch, still crying, when I felt a hand slowly caressing my right cheek. It wasn't just a light touch. I felt all the five fingers slowly touching my cheek, starting from my mouth to my ear. And I'm pretty sure whoever it was, it was facing me. I completely froze, stopped crying and sat there eyes wide for some good 30 seconds. Normally I would have run away screaming like a mad girl but instead of being frightened, I felt calm peaceful and like at least I had someone that cared about me. So I decided I would give my mom my suicide note in the morning and let her deal with it, look for a psychologist, turn off the lights and slept really peacefully that night. Needless to say I forced my parents dog to sleep with me the next days I had to sleep in the upper floor. I hoped that if there was a spirit, the dog would start to bark and I would run as fast as I could downstairs. I don't live with my parents anymore and haven't went to the upper floor much since that night but once I managed to mutter a thank you to then run downstairs with health looking back. If you want I'll write about all the creepy things that happened in my parents apartment, 
especially in my bedroom, and that traumatized me forever. My best friend in high school went through this stage of goth girls. I remember one night they took us haunted house exploring in the mid of night. Now we pulled over on this random in the middle of nowhere road and crawled through this barbed wire fence by moonlight. Past the fence over a small hill I found myself looking at this two-story and a basement farm home that was surrounded by a huge fountain. It looked like a run-down version of the home in the Great Gatsby. I wish to this day I knew how to get there, I have no idea where it was in my hometown just that we were there and it was beautifully run down. I was not a believer in the supernatural or ghosts so I was casually enjoying the home, inside there was markings on the wall, knocked down doors and walls and while you can tell it was beautiful at one time it was really run down. I broke from the group to check out the upstairs, the basement and the middle floor. As I was walking back to the group I walked by the stairwell and nodded to one of the girls that was with us who was standing on the stairwell. As I entered the next room I saw our entire group. I paused then jumped back into the room with the stairwell. No one was there. While creepy I know what I saw, I know that place had a feel to it. I wish I could find it again, I would go visit in the dead of the night just to feel what I felt there. I'm never quite sure if I 100% believe in ghosts or another energy plane that we can't see, but I've had enough experiences to at least be on the fence. My family and I had this dog, his name was Digby. He was a beautiful chocolate lab. So goofy and loving, he was great. When he was around 6 or 7, my dad, as usual, took Digby with him while he traveled to Ontario in the summers for work. That summer, he was hit by a truck. Dad put him in the back of his truck and tried to find a vet, but he was in the middle of nowhere and Digby died of internal bleeding. Now, Digby had these long nails that would make this THCK THCK sound when he walked around the house at night, which he did often. A few months after he died, every night I'd hear the THCK THCK sound. I know I wasn't hearing things, I never did have an overactive imagination and tend to be on the more logical side. I was so convinced that Digby's ghost was haunting, watching out for us that I told my mom, who, being a stern evangelical Christian, promptly told me to not mention it again. I had this ex, let's call him Cain. He was a bastard. Everything bad that could have happened, happened to us while we were together. We were broke living in a shitty old house with a bunch of other fucks, he didn't take care of himself, and every job always went wrong for him and he was fired or quit for one reason or another. He was definitely a lazy ass who couldn't get his shit together, and still can't from what I can see, but I really do feel like this dot 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 energy just kind of followed us around. Things got a bit better and we were able to move by ourselves to this little one bedroom on a street that had been known to have strange, paranormal activity on it, and a very creepy graveyard nearby. Anyway, weird things would happen. I'd feel followed and watched walking home from work, as if something was directly behind me breathing on me, lights would turn on in rooms no one was in, our standing fan would be moved right up close to our bed multiple times, and the shower curtain would move back sharply as if someone was getting in. Kane also had this teddy bear, and it was packed away. No mention of it had been made. It was just a bear. So one morning, I'm taking a shower, getting ready for work. The shower curtain was essentially clear so I could see through it, and would have seen anyone moving around and definitely would have heard it. I finish up and open the curtain and that bear is propped up against the wall, looking into the washroom. I have no idea how it got there, Kane was sound asleep and insisted he didn't touch it. I was thoroughly disturbed. Another time, in the same weird apartment, there was an incident with our neighbors. Now, to give you an idea of the layout, there were six apartments. Two on bottom, two middle, two on top. Kane and I lived on the bottom across from another couple, Tyler and Natalie. Middle floor was the older superintendent and a younger family, dad's name was Tim, and on the top floor there was another young family, and a girl who never stayed at her apartment. One late night, the superintendent was working, 
Yun family upstairs had gone out of town, Natalie and Tyler were in their car smoking with some friends, and Kane and I were on the front step by the main door of the building, which had a large window that allowed full view of the main hallway, the stairs leading down to our apartment, and Tim's apartment door was right by the building door. All of a sudden, we see Tim burst out of his apartment, shirtless. He had clearly been asleep. He frantically asked us if we had just banged on his door. We replied in the negative, and told him we hadn't seen anyone by his door at all. Tim became convinced somehow it was Tyler and Natalie, which was impossible, as they were outside the entire time. Evidently, Tim was woken by aggressive banging on the door, like as if someone banged on every part of the door in rage. Something we would have heard for sure. It was strange and Tim never did figure out what had happened. I was out running on a crushed gravel one fourth mile track at about 0530 so it was still completely dark out and I was the only one there. This area was a battle site during the Civil War, nearby an old timey hospital, old army base, it. Not sure if directly related but I think worth mentioning. That morning I was doing 30 slash 60 s sprint for 30 seconds, walk for 60. At one point I was on the south side of the track during a walking portion. I hear footsteps coming up behind me at the pace of a run. I start moving towards the outside of the track and look behind me to make sure I'm not going to be in the way of someone moving at a faster pace. But no one was there. I think it just must have been my imagination. I circle around and end up walking in the same area again. Same thing. I hear footsteps, move towards the outside but don't see anyone. Now I was starting to get weirded out but I keep on with my sprints. Every time I ended up walking on that section of track I would start to hear running steps behind me. But it was only that section and only if I was walking. And since the pace didn't match with mine, I knew it wasn't some kind of echo. I still use that track but I've never been back that early. Footstep but not track related. When I first moved into that area I was the only person living on the third floor of my building. There is non-existing soundproofing so if any door off the main hallway opens or closes, especially the stairwell doors, I'm able to hear it. One night I don't hear any doors but I start to hear someone walking down the hall. Like they're shuffling along and flip-flops. Since no one else lived on my floor there was no reason for anyone from the second floor to be there. Lights come on automatically when someone enters the hallway but I was a little too freaked to look at my peephole to see if there was any light. I'm still not sure which would have been worse if I had looked. Well, it's not much, but it definitely creeped me out. I was in a nurse's aid program a few years ago that entailed doing clinicals in nursing homes. A classmate and I showed up early in the morning at the door of a very old facility that used to be some kind of Victorian manor. The very front room was like a little hallway with some chairs for waiting. There were two doors the main door leading into the facility, and a side door leading through a hallway where the main offices were. Sometimes there was someone in the hallway who would let CNAs in because it was a faster walk to the nurse's station that way. Anyway, we walk into this little hallway and ring the buzzer. We automatically turn to face the side door because usually someone will open that particular door when they see it's a CNA wanting to get in. It is just pitch black on the other side. One of the lace curtains on the other side was drawn back. Someone was taking a peek to see who it was. Sweet we were going to be let in. So we waited. Seconds dragged on. WTF? I looked through the door and of course it was pitch black, except I could see the faint light of an open doorway at the end of the corridor. There did seem to be anyone moving around back there. We knocked and shouted hello but there was no response. After a while the other door unlatched. Confused, we let ourselves in the other way and took the long way to the nurse's station. There was a small crowd around the station as usual. Hey you guys, why didn't you let us in through the other door when you saw us? We got funny looks and were told that no one was back there. That particular area was cordoned off at night so that the dementia residents wouldn't wander around the offices. We looked and sure enough, 
The entrance to that corridor was gated off. The nurses at the station sent someone back there to make sure a resident hadn't gotten past the gate, but the area was empty. One of the older nurses later told us that strange stuff like that happens all the time, because the home was considered to be haunted. She said we'd better get used to it if we wanted to work at that particular facility. My classmate and I were pretty freaked out. I was an agnostic and she was a conservative Christian who didn't believe in ghosts. We racked our brains and decided that someone must have been trying to play a trick, but we hadn't seen anyone come out from there even after the office staff arrived and took down the gate. I looked for air vents that may have made the curtain rise up but that would not have made sense either, because it was a very specific and quick motion of part of the curtain being drawn back and there were no vents to be found anyway. My classmate and I finally agreed just not to talk about it. It was nothing major just a lace curtain being drawn back in an empty hallway but it definitely got creepier the more I thought about it. Weird. Paranormal things have been happening to me since I was about 6 years old, so I have a whole bunch of these stories. Shit just seems to follow me everywhere. Here are a few of the ones that creep me out the most. My parents got divorced when I was about 12. Some minor things happened in the first few places we lived in. We moved into this apartment complex when I was about 14. The manager ever so kindly let us know that the previous tenant died. Well, isn't that just lovely? So, in that apartment, a lot of weird stuff happened. Once, a big glass fire X measuring cup, pitcher fell off the counter and shattered on the floor. I had made sure I put it down no less than 5 inches away from the edge, and my cat had been sleeping on the couch the entire time. My cat used to mess with the lower cabinet doors, making them open a bit and then close with a bang. One night, I woke up because of the cabinet doors banging around. I got up, dragged my exhausted ass to the kitchen and yelled at her to stop. I don't see her anywhere in the kitchen, and then I remembered she wasn't even in the apartment. We had taken her up to my grandmother's earlier that week. When I was 16, 17, I was sitting in the living room with my then boyfriend, being silly and taking pictures with a digital camera. Every picture we had taken that afternoon were all weird. There were orbs, drastic lighting changes, weird streaks of light, and faces reflected in the computer monitor that was off, and the faces didn't belong to either of us. To debunk the pictures, I cleaned up the camera lenses, cleaned the monitor, made sure the lamp wasn't being glitchy, and took a couple of more pictures. Orbs and faces didn't reappear, but the weird lighting and streaks did. I set the camera down because it freaked me out, and the next day when I wanted to show my best friend the pictures, they were all gone. All but one, a picture of me and my then boyfriend sitting next to each other. Never can explain it, and I still have that picture saved. That was about 10 years ago, I have a lot more stories about weird shit happening in the places he and I lived at together, and I'm still dealing with weird shit in the house I'm in now. Heard about dwarves and thought they really might be demons, fallen angels, in realty. One day I got pissed off at my dad for no apparent reason after going to church, and said a snotty comment. I thought hmm, maybe something paranormal could be influencing me. I went to the bathroom with the lights off as I was starting to calm down, took a picture flash and on my screen for the two seconds before the actual picture was taken, I saw a ball of dull light shoot up at great speed in my frame and disappear. The picture which I have now deleted was simply an easily dismissible smudge. Fast forward a month or so with my newly found conviction that orbs are demons, I decided to try it out with my Android camera after a night out at the bars. So I went to a big party school and loved to drink copious amounts of alcohol while listening to loud music while programming, while at the bar and even by myself. I realized at times often with the prompting of certain passion-filled songs similar feelings would come up out of me seemingly out of nowhere and I connected this back to my time when I got pissed and decided to be snotty at my dad for no reason. Maybe these orbs are a partial cause of not my actions but the cause of my unexplainable moods. So one night after I'd been drinking a lot, I was in my room at my fraternity at about 2 or 3 am, by myself listening to Pink Floyd. 
dark side of the moon noticed some of the feelings I'd been having. I while drunk videotaped the room and myself while my camera light was on and captured many orbs shooting through the room at high speed as if dancing along with the song. For any of you that think these are dust particles, I took a video 5 minutes before and did not see any of them. I have both videos still on my phone and probably could post them. Frankly I was astounded the next morning after I watched them. I don't recommend ghost hunting as it can be dangerous and open you up to spirits. TLDR, discovered what orbs are in reality to my own complete satisfaction but likely will still be denied by just about anyone else. So I grew up and lived in rural New England most of my life which meant that when I was in high school if my friends and I wanted to go see a movie we had to drive for about 45 minutes. Well one night my buddy and I decided to go see a movie, some action flick like Captain America or Judge Dredd or something so we weren't in a weird state of mind from a horror movie or anything like that, and on the way back home I decided to take the back road so that I could drive a little faster. Now back roads in Vermont are a lot of fun and scary as hell if you don't know what you're doing, they're almost one lane dirt roads cutting through endless miles of mountains and forest with a house every 5 miles if you're lucky. So we're on one of these roads, radio is playing some rock and roll and it's snowing. Not lightly snowing or crazy amounts of snow just a soft pleasant snowfall and we're about halfway home deep in the woods and we come to this hill and at the top of the hill it curves so it's a blind hill in the middle of the woods and it's snowing so I slow down significantly. We round the corner and my headlights light up this spot on the side of the road where the snow refuses to fall, but it's not just an empty space there's snow piling up in three spots the way it would if there was a person standing there and the snow was building up on their shoulders and head and it stays that way long enough for me to register all of that and then the snow build up all sort of collapses and it looks just like everything else and I've driven past the spot. Well I continue driving for a while in silence trying to make sense of what I just saw in my head and see if I can find a rational explanation and I can't really do I ask my friend. Did you see that? And he looks at me for a moment and says. Oh thank god I thought I was hallucinating. So we described what we saw and we saw the same thing and then we turned around and drove back up and down the road really slowly to see if we could see it again or find a reason why it might have happened and there was nothing. This actually happened some nights ago. I went to bed early, 10 slash 11 p.m. when I usually go to sleep at like 2 a.m. I wasn't really tired, just bored so I just decided to call it a night and sleep more hours since I kinda needed. Mind you that I'm a heavy sleeper, it's quite rare for me to wake up in the middle of the night. That night I woke up. My bed is close to the wall and I was sleeping facing it, and as I woke up I had this uneasy feeling that something was watching me. Yep, decided to look at the foot of my bed and there it was. I saw these five dark shadows with red eyes looking at me, four of them were human shaped but only two had the red eyes, the others were just pure black. The last figure was huge and it was in a shape of something that reminded me of a lion and had the red eyes too. I knew it wasn't sleep paralysis cause I pretty much shifted my entire body away from them when I first saw them and grabbed my covers to bring them closer to my head. I just looked at them for what seemed like hours but it was probably 10-20 seconds and had a feeling that if I kept looking something bad was going to happen and decided to just cover my entire head with the covers and go back to sleep hoping that whatever the fuck they were, they would just go away and don't mess with me. As I said, it's pretty rare for me to wake up in the middle of the night but every time it happens I see some shadows. Some make me feel uneasy and terrified and some just make me feel comfortable and happy, pretty sure one of the times when this happened it was my grandpa who passed away when I was young. Spent the summer I was 14 at my grandparents house. My gramps had just retired and moved back to the family farm. The farm is huge and has been in the family like 200 years. My gramps had been an accountant for like 35 years and while he was out of state working, his brother had basically milked the farm dry. So, 
my grandpa moved back and his retirement house had just finished being built. So, we went about fixing the farm back up, fencing, cutting grass, tending to the livestock, repairing the barns, typically farm work. My grandfather kept the family that lived on the farm around and on the payroll, let them live rent free on the farm in an old house. Well they had a son that was my age. We'd work all day and then I'd walk down the hill to his house because he had a basketball goal. So, my grandparents would sit on the back porch chatting, reading the paper, knitting, whatever, while I was just down the hill playing hoops. They have one of those cast iron bells that they ring when it's time to eat or come in for the night. Well they ring the bell, I holler that I'll come in after this game and hear my granny tell me okay. So, like 15 minutes later the game's over and I'm heading in. I walk past the water well that's been in the family for years. I think it was last ray drilled like 80 years ago or something insane like that. I'm about 25 feet from the house, porch and I hear violin music. Now, it's obviously not coming from the house with the basketball hoop, it's coming from closer. I've heard all kinds of stories about this farm, civil war battles, ghosts, etc. etc. I hadn't had anything happen to me, until now. I walk back towards the house with the hoop, I get about 10 feet in the other direction and the violin music just stops. I call out and no one answers. Well, I am sure it's just the farmhand's son, cause I always win at basketball so they messing with me. So, I turn around and start heading inside. I get further away and again more violin music. WTF? I turn and start running down the hill hoping to catch them in the act. It stops and I go all the way down the hill and it's obvious they are inside as I hear all of them talking. WTF? I scurry back up the hill and go inside. I tell my granny and she's in the most chill manner ever, oh that's your great great uncle so and so, he used to sit on the well and play the violin when he was alive, so now sometimes we hear him. WTF? So, yeah I was always inside before dark after that. Figuring it's better not take any chances. Then one night, I'm chilling in the basement watching baseball on ESPN. This basement is huge, and full of beds. Between each bed is a dresser with a lamp. I'm on the sofa in front of the fireplace, with the TV off to the right and behind that the stairs. On the other side of the stairs, is the beds. So, I'm just chilling with only the TV on. My grandparents were cool, they didn't care how long I stayed up, just so long as I got up and put in my day's work. I have all the lights off and I'm chilling, I typically slept on the couch. All of a sudden a fucking lamp on the other side of the stairs turns on. Just the lamp. I run up the fucking stairs and get my grandparents. They come down, see that the light's on, turn it off and make a comment that apparently the ghost had moved in. WTF. Yeah, I got to the point where I sleep with the basement lights on. Place freaked me out and still does. When my little brother was younger and had just started to get a firm grasp on talking, he'd get upset about something in reference when he was an adult. Like, Dad wouldn't let him eat some cake and little bro would say well when I was an adult, I did whatever I wanted. Or mom and dad would have a fight and he'd say when I was an adult, I never fought with my wife. Creep me out? Once I said man you're too young to remember such and such and his reply was no, I remember it from when I was an adult. He grew out of it eventually but man if that didn't make me question everything I know. My cousin is a few years older than I am and is on the board for our small town church so he has a key. I distinctly remember one night we were up there at the church playing Guitar Hero and Magic the Gathering with some friends and it got kind of late so our friends left. I stayed to help him close up the building and when we were leaving. We both got chills at the exact same time because of this presence behind us. Turning around. At the far end of the main hallway, there was this intense darkness like I've never seen before and we both felt absolutely horrified. To this day I don't know what we felt but we both were shaken for a week or so afterwards. When I was younger, maybe six or seven, I'd had a nightmare and so had run to hop in the bed with my parents. At the foot of the bed was my little brother's baby crib. 
I will always remember watching in absolute horror as a pale white hand reached out of the crib. Grasping at the air as an equally pale white face appeared above the crib, just floating. I just remember burying my face in the sheets until I fell asleep. Saw a black dog I've never seen before or since at the crossroads by my house. Scared the piss out of me. Saw two more black dogs over the course of the week and then had a car wreck and absolutely totaled my car. If the legend had held true, I'd be dead. Took this as God's way of saying he's stronger than stories of demon dogs. I used to be a music major so when it came time for Hell House around Halloween, I was given the task of making the music for the room that was to represent Hell. I worked hard on that, reversing the weird intros of some Coheed and Cambria songs and finding audio clips of men and women screaming in pain and the sounds of swords being grinded and you name it. I love the horror genre so I went to town on this audio track. 7 minutes of nerve-wracking satanic sounding music. When I was making it though, my room suddenly felt incredibly dark. I felt suddenly very cold and all the hairs on the back of my neck stood up. I went to the bathroom to kind of gather myself and it got worse when I left my room. I prayed, and felt better but I could still feel this strange and dark presence near me. I felt like I was being watched and I used the terror I was feeling as inspiration for the audio track. I slept with my Bible that night. Everyone at the Hell House said it was the creepiest music they had ever heard. My mother used to tell me that when I was very young I would talk to someone who I would call the lady. When she asked me about this lady I would describe a kindly middle-aged woman who stood in the doorway between the living room and the kitchen and talked to me. She never moved from that doorway. Of course, it freaked my parents out a bit, but they always figured that it was just an imaginary friend. But what kind of kid has a middle-aged lady as an imaginary friend who never moves from one spot? I don't remember anything about the lady though. I do however remember a strange incident one night. I was reading comics after bedtime by the light that used to come into my room from the landing when I became aware of someone coming up the stairs. So, I did what every kid does and pretended to be asleep so I didn't get in trouble. But I kept the sneaky eye open so that I could return to my comic once the coast was clear. The person approached the top of the stairs, paused and then came into my room. I could see it was a man and assumed it was my father checking on me. But rather than come toward the bed, the figure started pulling at an old nailed up hatch in the ceiling. It gave two or three pulls from different directions and then left the room. I was absolutely convinced that it had been my father, but not wanting to get in trouble I didn't mention it for about a week when my curiosity got the better of me. I asked him what he had been doing, why he had been pulling at the hatch. He had never been in my room that night, and certainly had no interest in an old and entirely unusable hatch when there was a perfectly operational hatch to the same place in his own room. The last vaguely supernatural experience I ever experienced was many years later. I had been out for a few drinks with my friends, a regular occurrence which always ended with the long walk back from town some three miles into the countryside, I had no torch and mobile phones weren't yet common enough for me to have one. The last half mile was through a wood with an old quarry to one side, which was always a little unsettling as you could hear the screech of tortured metal in the wind, or an unseen animal rustling through the undergrowth. However, there were a pair of white dogs who lived on the other side of the woods who would always join me as I walked past and accompany me through the woods, and I was always grateful for having them with me, especially since they were so easy to see by the moonlight. Once we got to the other side of the woods, they would turn back and head home. Then, one night they came bounding up to me as usual and walked with me right up until we got to the edge of the woods, at which point they stopped, pricked their ears toward the wood, and ran away. Naturally, quite a lot of poo came out. But since I had no choice but go through the woods, I bailed on experiencing the journey as hard as possible by singing at the top of my voice and moving as quickly as possible until I had cleared the woods and got home. But the strange bit was that I never saw those dogs ever again. My mom is an immigrant from Croatia. She came over on a boat when she was five years old. I love, loved both of my grandparents growing up. 
They were so different from my dad's waspy side of the family. Crazy accents, crazy food, etc. My grandpa, Ota in Croatian, was famous for riding his big cherry red peewee Herman style bike all around town. He would be gone for hours at a time just riding all over. We always knew he was back when he rang his big, goofy bicycle bell. You could always hear it, even when you were in their house. He died in 1993. Exactly a year later I was walking home from school alone. I usually walked home with two other friends, but they were sick that day. On one block, a little less than a mile from my house, there was a hedge that obscured the view of the cross street near the intersection. As I walked up, I basically froze. The air around me got dot 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 fuzzy. It almost looked like a dream in a movie. The light had a different quality, the hair stood up on my arms. Then I heard the bell. I know that all those bells sound the same, but in that moment I knew it was his. Goosebumps as I write this, as I stood there, basically frozen, I see my Oda taking the turn around the hedge from the side street. He was on his big red bike. He smiled at me. He was wearing a big floppy hat. He tipped his hat to me and rode off. I'll never forget it. I freaked out. I ran the rest of the way home and told my mom. She said I was crazy for being scared. She said, of all people to be afraid of, he's not the one to pick. I realized that that was absolutely right. He was just saying hi, I guess. Every time I drive or walk by that intersection, I hope to see him riding by. TL, Dr. Ghost Gramps. I'm very surprised at the lack of alien or monstrous experiences in this thread. Regardless I'll share a few of my own, though some will belong to my family and friends. Though they aren't creepy, most are supernational slash explainable slash just plain odd. When I was little, lying in bed, watching my parents watch TV, we lived in a roundhouse, with the only other room being the bathroom, my bed was beside the kitchen, separated by a wall and directly behind the living area which faced the TV, I looked up at the netting of toys which was nailed to my ceiling and saw my stuffed bear wave at me. In the middle of the night I woke up facing the wall on my left side. My bed is set in between two walls on either side, the right wall having a mirror, a window sat where a headboard would have been, I wasn't sure why I woke up initially, it was a night where I had lost a tooth and tucked it underneath my pillow. Light from traffic passed through my window bouncing off the mirror, shining directly onto the wall in front of me. It cast a shadow of a figure behind me, that figure was nude, bald, humanoid, and seemingly examining something very small, what I assumed to be a tooth that I had put underneath one of my pillows, I dared not turn around, and kept my breathing even till I eventually fell asleep. I thought it was the tooth fairy at the time. I left my house one night to help my neighbor with her groceries. We shared the property, she had a lot of animals, quite a few cats and around six dogs, and we were friends, next to her house sat the pump house. For some odd reason I felt the urge to look around the corner and take a peek, what stood there in the dark were two animals who I thought were wolves, they were too big to be coyotes, and despite no light shining on their faces besides some faint starlight, their eyes glowed red. We exchanged stares for a moment before they turned around and marched off to where I couldn't see. Our yard is fenced in and not easily escapable or penetrable, and our dogs are very watchful of other animals. We lived in Arizona at the time where no wolves dwell, I didn't see any sign of them after that. One time when I was a kid my dad was angry, I don't remember why, only that I felt nervous because of it, he was throwing a fit and eventually kicked my balloon, my only balloon, out of anger and it popped, I started crying, I only got one once a year if that, and went over to the window bench to sob dramatically. It was quite windy at the time, and after 20 minutes or so of crying I noticed outside on one of our cherry trees that a balloon, that definitely wasn't there before, started to grow out of the branches, starting off small, yet growing bigger as if the wind was blowing into it. My parents saw part way, and my dad went out to pluck it off of the small tree for me. When I was a teenager I was feeling very sick and suffered from some terrible cramps. 
In my family we consider painful slash saddening slash angering slash depressing or just restful experiences to be a place of great creativity and magic, so I use that time to paint on my wall. The designs were purely abstract and were merely doodles for me at the time. I think it was the day after, but I awoke to find that one of my paintings had manifested to life in a 3D form, it looked like a monster to me and I screamed, thinking it was going to kill me. It did nothing but look at me, and eventually vanished 15 seconds or so later. My parents went out for a walk in the yard earlier before I awoke and couldn't hear me. I realized after it had vanished that the reason it didn't attack me was because I hadn't given it the ability to, out in the desert of New Mexico, far out where there were no houses, only giant rocks in the night sky, my dad decided to park his truck next to Shiprock for the night. While facing away from Shiprock, he heard footsteps emerge from the rock and walk up behind him, at that moment he was paralyzed with fear and couldn't turn around to look behind him, after a moment, he heard the footsteps walk back into the rock and disappeared. There were visible footprints. My father is an abductee, and the only one that we know of who didn't have a bad experience from it. When he was abducted, he was very calm, he awoke suddenly realizing he was on a ship. His back was to a wall. A machine lowered a pyramid-shaped device into his chest for a moment before pulling it back out, my dad spoke to one of the aliens in front of him, what are you doing? Well, we need monitor you more closely. It said. Though my father felt the alien was leaving something out. Afterwards he had a very enjoyable and in-depth conversation with a group of aliens, they were very friendly with toothless grins, almost always laughing after saying something and they talked about humanity's greatest misunderstanding of their reality and its underlying mechanics. They said that they were there to sort of ease humanity's transition into an entirely new reality much closer to their own. One of those aliens is named Howard and they're long distance buddies so to speak with me dad. I can't speak in detail as my dad is writing a book partially involving it. Don't wanna spoil. In the middle of the night, my mom walked outside. At the time there were no other houses and it was very refreshing, she looked up to see a large triangle, though completely black, she could see its silhouette moving across the starry sky. It was perfectly silent. In the middle of the night I awoke to a feeling of incredible fear, I wore a sleeping mask that had slightly moved off of my face during my sleep, I heard a ratcheting sound, as if the shingles on the roof were raised and then flapped back down like a deck of cards. It was quiet for a long time after that, and as I was trying to get comfortable again an extremely bright light slowly passed over my skylight directly over my bed and then vanished once out of sight, if you've seen videos of UFOs, they can move re e e e, -e fucking fast, the next morning I spoke to my dad, he told me that was the sound alien ships make when they boot up, for lack of a better phrase. Occasionally on and off, I'd hear the ratcheting sound now and then outside our home, I awoke one night to a vision, like a second pair of my own eyes opened up. It was perfectly clear as if I was awoke to somewhere else. I was in the pump house, except it was almost completely empty, save for a few metal racks filled with books that sat in the center of the room, they looked exactly like my leather bound diary. What was also inside the house standing before me was an old bearded man who looked at me with shining young blue eyes. I asked him, is this real? He smiled, nodded, then shook his head as well. I chuckled and followed him into the main room where the dusty books lay, he picked one off of the shelves and flipped through the pages, showing me the contents. Somehow, I knew that everything about this world was in them, when he flipped to the end, the vision ended. My second pair of eyes closed. When my friend was young, trying to sleep in the top of her bunk bed, she saw an eerie creature crawl out of the window in front of her into her room, just before it got to her, her mother passed the night light in the hallway, casting a shadow, and it crawled back out. My friend told me she thought she was going to die. I have quite a few others but they're not all that supernational physically, a lot of them are just dreams or odd feelings, and the wonderful and strange, and even a few times supposed travel experiences, I feel it'd get too long. I don't believe in any sort of actual supernatural stuff. God, ghosts, souls, demons, angels, none of it. 
I don't believe in any of it and I'm a firm atheist. But sometimes I think I believe in evil. Sometimes I get dreams where I'm with somebody I don't like, a despised family member or a hated associate. I'll be talking to them, and they'll say things and I'll get the feeling that something's just egging me on to do it, to just wrap my fingers around their slimy fucking throat and take their worthless shitty lives from them. Of course I would never, ever, actually hurt someone. A direct relative of mine was schizophrenic, but since things have never manifested while awake I'm not concerned. But I have dreams where I kill people, and it's very frightening because I always do it in the dream. I don't really want to, but it's not like I have any control over it. I'm just in my body and it does the things that the dream leads on. Sometimes it's just in terrible ways that make me sick when I wake up. Though what's really creepy is that a couple times the settings reiterate themselves the next day. I once had a dream where I was in the rec room and an annoying and snarky co-worker comes in and starts talking about how happy they are and how great their day is. In the dream I smashed the scalding hot coffee pot over his head, burning his face in the process with the roasted brew, and used the broken glass to open his throat. I woke up, shuttered it off, and went to work that day. There I am, in the rec room getting coffee, when the very same co-worker walks in, gives me his what's up buddy? Bullshit, and I find myself in the exact same setting as my dream. Except I didn't murder him, since I actually have control of my body. I would never actually hurt him, I mean he's annoying, but he's just an idiot and he's harmless. But that wasn't the first time I've had a violent dream the night before only to find myself in the same situation the next day. Sometimes I indulge, and I let myself think that there is an evil force trying to corrupt me, trying to get me to do terrible things. But it's all bullshit, anyway. Alright, I've talked about this before, but I'll throw in a little extra. I live in a council house in Wales, and the man who used to live here was old and fragile, and passed away in the hospital. We moved in afterwards, and things for the first two years everything was peachy. Then odd things started taking place. The earliest account of something strange I can remember was when my brother and I were about to go to sleep, we shared a bunk bed, when there was a terrifying sound of something being dragged along our radiator rang throughout the room. We were literally stunned into silence, and after about five seconds we ran as fast as we could downstairs. Freaked us out to be sure. Then, fast forward to Christmas, my cousin was on the loo, he said someone was fiddling with the locks, and by the time he got out, he did not hear anyone run down the stairs, and everyone sweared that no one did it. The last few weeks, I stayed up late due to school, and I hear strange noises, say if we haven't washed up and there is plates and cutlery will move around as if someone is picking them up, and someone shuffling around. Now. Here is the most terrifying account which I can't explain and don't understand. A few months ago, I was lying awake around 3 in the morning because I couldn't sleep. Then, my brother woke up to go to the toilet. I thought nothing of it, why should I it's human? Anyway, as he was done doing his business, he walks back in. Now this is where things get strange. He doesn't say a word, just turns around closes the door and pushes his hands against the door to keep it closed. This was really strange, so I try calling out to him to see if he's alright. I get no response for the first time, and so after five times I give up. Now, as I lie down, I hear some shuffling in my parents' room and I realize he actually slipped into bed with my parents because he had a nightmare. I registered he was actually in my room, so I calmly lied back down, and went back to sleep trying not to freak out. Now here's another weird thing, the neighbor said he loved children, and the parents, elders never experienced anything. Still freaks me out. Growing up, a friend lived in a very old house that was used during the Underground Railroad to hide escaping slaves. Her mom was obsessed with the history of the house and gave us all a grand tour showing the hidden passageways and the tunnel to the barn every time anyone would come over. She always stressed to never go into the tunnels and passages at night because there was no electricity and therefore no lights and we could fall and get hurt in some of them. One night there was a sleepover at this girl's house. 
scary movies were going to be watched. Her mom thought it would be funny to tell us about how the house is supposedly haunted just before watching the Amityville Horror or some such movie, can't remember what we watched. Her mom and her brother were trying to scare us by going outside and tapping on windows, laughing maniacally, etc. None of us really got scared by their antics and eventually they both settled down on the couches with us to watch. All of a sudden the TV goes to the classic black and white sandy stuff but the creepy suspenseful horror movie music is still playing. All the lights started to flicker and two picture frames that were on top of the TV in the paperweight dropped to the floor. I wasn't looking at the TV but my friend swears to this day that she saw a woman's face appear on the screen briefly before everything went back to normal. Needless to say, none of us slept very well that night. Another sleepover. Same town, same friends, different house? This one used to be an outbuilding for a farm where the farm hands lived and stored all the salted meats. Not supposed to be haunted, but you never know. We did all the typical sleepover stuff, Ouija board, telling ghost stories, tried to scare each other. We were only allowed in the basement area, it was finished, which was where the meats used to hang when it was a farm. There was a doorway between the two rooms of the basement. One we hung out in, the other had a fridge with soda and such. Me and another friend went to grab a soda and everyone else ran upstairs to eat snacks. The doorway randomly slammed shut and we just thought it was a prank went to get our sodas. When we tried to get back through the door we found ourselves locked in this room, in the dark, with only the light of a fish tank. We pounded on the door thinking someone was still playing a joke on us but nobody responded. We kept trying the door and it felt like someone was holding it shut. We started to get an eerie feeling at this point that it wasn't a prank at all, and started hysterically yelling for someone to come let us out. Nobody came for a while and then we finally hear someone coming down the stairs and we yell louder. They open the door in surprise because they were just coming to get a soda. Nobody had heard us screaming or banging on the door. We go upstairs and the mom of the house says that door doesn't even lock and doesn't close properly and can just be opened by pushing on it. We stressed that we did this and were pushing, banging on it and it wouldn't budge. Everyone swore they were upstairs the whole time. As we are talking about what could have happened, a toy keyboard down in the basement plays a short tune. There was nobody downstairs to play it and nobody had touched this keyboard. We go back downstairs and the piano is lying in the middle of the floor in the room we were locked in, with no batteries in it. It won't even turn on, let alone play a song. That was the last time I ever played with a Ouija board. So I'm terrible at writing but I'll give it a go since it's the first time I had ever experienced something like it, changing my view a little bit on the matter. To start off I go to college at an average sized school in the Midwest. It was my junior year, so I was sharing a shitty house with five of my friends. We rented out this house because it held all of us and being the shitty procrastinators we were we got stuck with this three story giant old house on the edge of campus. Kinda a creepy house but didn't really bother me or any of my roommates because it did its job and provided a shelter for drinking. I along with my friend lived on the first floor, three on the next floor up, and my other friend living in the attic which was pretty much just converted into a giant room, he got it lucky except in the summer when it was humid as fuck. Besides these three floors was a basement that none of us really liked to go into because it was dark and wet. However, we had to occasionally because that's where the washing machine was of course. So the first weird thing that happened occurred like a week or two into the school year. We had all been out drinking on a weekend, and I get back to the house and pass out along with everyone else. Except when I wake up in the morning I was confused because I saw my overhead lights glass cover sitting on the ground. I don't know how to explain it, but you know in old houses there's just an exposed light bulb but this big glass housing covered it to diffuse the light a little bit. Thinking that my roommates had taken it down I asked them why they did it because now it was going to be annoyed to be hung back up because the ceiling was so high. They all said they hadn't come into my room and hadn't touched it. This confused me because this thing was pretty massive for a piece of glass. It was maybe 10 pounds and surely would have broken or at least woken me up, no matter how much I had drank, if it had fallen. But nonetheless it was placed perfectly below the light. 
confused but not really freaked out I tried to wheel over my chair and put it back on, but to no avail because it was so high and my chair spun around when I stood on it, so enough that I can deal without a light cover. However the more I thought about it the weirder it felt just because it was my room and it was just so strange. Fast forward a few months to the middle of the school year. Nothing really out of the ordinary has happened other than some lights randomly turning on or off. Then me and my friend are walking back into the house and this is where things really started to get weird. My housemate and I are walking into the house from the back entrance near the driveway, near the room where my other friend lived on the first floor. We get to the door and are talking and not really paying much attention, but as we enter the house through the small door and hallway which led to the kitchen on the left, my friend's room straight ahead, and the bathroom off to the right, I see something move from the bathroom to the kitchen very quickly. Being behind my friend I immediately looked at him, and he had surely seen it too. Both of us, assume it is the housemate who lives right there so we stop and call his name. No response, so I listened to see if I could hear anything. Nothing. I was hoping to hear something as someone walking that quickly across the hard kitchen floor would surely make noise, but no, the house was silent. I asked my friend if he had seen exactly what I had seen, a quick flash of a dark shape, I know that sounds so typical, but it looked like someone took a heavy dark winter overcoat and threw it quickly across the narrow hallway. Mind you the hallway was maybe a couple feet wide and it crossed it so quickly, we couldn't really get a good look. However my housemate agreed that's exactly what he saw too, and both of assuming it was the kid who lived there, he was African so we had assumed this dark figure was him. But as we find out, he was there, and actually I think none of my other housemates were in the house at the time. This really freaked us out because we were certain there was something that had moved, and worse so because we didn't see anything at all afterwards, someone breaking in would have been less unsettling as we would have found them and my friend who I was walking in with is a big kid who you really didn't want to get in a fight with, but as I said nothing at all was there. This led to both of us discussing what we saw, and how for both of us that was the first thing like that that had happened to us. That is pretty much the story. Nothing super crazy, but it was definitely something that I haven't forgotten about as it was so weird and right before us both. Nothing more really happened, but my girlfriend swore that one night she woke up and went to get a glass of water late night and some dude was standing right in our living room and immediately ran away outside after she saw him. Can't say anything about it as I didn't see, but she swears on it. Hope you weren't too pained by my writing. I have a few, and happened to me, some to family, I hope that's okay. Story time. When my mom was younger my grandparents took her and my two aunts and uncle to Buffalo, New York, for a family Thanksgiving at one of my great aunt's house. My great aunt was very religious, as is her daughter now. She told my mom's cousin to set the table and to remember two extra places because her grandparents, my great grandparents, were on their way. Time time goes by, and she goes back into the dining room to check on her daughter. As she quickly checked the table settings, she noticed they are too short. She asked Sally, her daughter, where the extra settings are. Sally tells her, Grandma and Grandpa aren't coming. They're all covered in blood. Most Catholic people know, you don't say stuff like that. So naturally, she was sent to her room. Not long after that, they got a call from the hospital, my great-grandparents had been in a bad car accident, Buffalo, New York, November, snow. They survived, but when the family got to the hospital, they were still covered in blood because part of my great-grandfather's ear had been ripped off in the crash. 2. When my mom was pregnant with me, 1983-1984, my grandfather was home alone while everyone was at work. At this point in time my grandparents lived in a double-wide mobile home, imagine an RV, but permanent. Basically a long hallway with bedrooms. So he was at the front of the house in the dining room, smoking a cigarette, having some coffee dot 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 when he got that feeling dot 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 like you think there's someone else in the house, but you're sure you're alone. 
After a while he got up and went to the hallway, and at the end of the hall right in front of his bedroom door is his dad, the one from the car accident. This was about 15 years after the first story, and my great-grandfather had since passed away, do you could imagine the fear he must have been feeling. After a few minutes, my great-grandfather said it's going to be a long, hard, road. And that was it. My grandpa took one step towards his father, when he just faded away. When my grandma got home from work, he told her what happened, and they sort of just forgot about it after a while. A few months later he was diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease, ALS, and the future told him that within five years, he'd be dead. Two weeks after I turned 16 he died. It was a long road with oxygen tanks, breathing tubes, feeding tubes, hospital visits, surgeries, memory loss, medication, and eventually being confined to a hospital bed unable to speak, eat or walk. It was a long dot 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 hard dot 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 road. 3. When I was around 7, I had to share a room with my brother because my mom was a single mother and her brother moved in with us, only 3 rooms. We had bunk beds and I slept on top because I'm older. One Friday night my mom and uncle had some friends over and my brother and I were sent to bed, I remember waking up sometime around midnight I'd guess and just laying on my side staying at the wall. After a while I told to my back and sat up, then crossed my legs, Indian style. I sat there staying at the opposite wall for what felt like hours, and I'd started to zone out. Then I felt weird, like I was floating, and I started thinking I should lie back down. But then I started turning, just spinning and all of a sudden I was looking at myself dot 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 lying in bed dot 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 facing the wall. I looked down and freaked out dot 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 I was floating in the middle of my room practically touching the ceiling. I realized I must have been dreaming, so I let go of the fear and let it play out. I floated to the bedroom door and down the hall towards the living room. I made it as far as the threshold where I just watched my mom, uncle and their friends having a small party. I watched for a while and then, even though it wouldn't come out for years, the best way to explain would be dot 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 using a port key dot 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 I felt a tug in my stomach pulling me backwards down the hallway back into bed where I immediately woke up. It was daytime. So being Saturday morning I went into the living room. Made it to the threshold when I froze dot 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 everything was the same. They had been drinking so nobody drove home she except for my mom and uncle who had bedrooms, everyone was in the same place as they were in my dream. After a while I'd forgotten about it until I was around 11 of a read a mystery book called The Mystery of the Crystal Dog, or something like that, but it dealt with astral projection. That triggered the memory and I started to wonder if that's what I'd done. This will probably be the last one. 4. When I was probably dot 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 oh, at least 25 dot 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 my cousins Megan, Sami, Amanda and Doug wanted to hang out. So we went to Sami and Doug's, rural dot 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 bonfire, and Megan and Sami decided to invite their boyfriends. So there we were around this dwindling fire when someone suggested s'mores. We didn't have what we needed so someone would have to go to the store. Megan asked if she could take my car, and Sami and Amanda offered to go with. I said sure and tossed then my keys. As I turned back to the fire to talk to the guys my blood turned to ice. The worst case of deja vu hit me. In the middle of a sentence I bolted towards my car which was now moving towards me and stood in front of it. Without preamble I got in. Understandably, everyone in the car was confused, Megan asked if I wanted to drive, I said no, I'd just changed my mind and wanted to go. Once we got back to the house everyone demanded I explain, because even the guys were worried. So here is the explanation, about a month prior, I had a nightmare. In it Megan, Amanda, Sami, her boyfriend Chris, Doug, and a faceless guy who could have only been Megan boyfriend, at the time of the dream she wasn't dating anyone, were at Sami and Doug's house around a fire when someone suggested s'mores. Megan asked to drive my car. I tossed her my keys and the girls went with her. 
After a while me and the guys heard sirens, and I got a phone call. My car had been involved in an accident and my cousins were pronounced dead at the scene. No matter how many times I went back and changed it, still in the dream here, it was the same outcome. I'd make Amanda drive dot 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 all dead. I'd make Sami drive dot 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 all dead. I'd make one of the guys go with dot 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 all dead. Before I could try any scenario with me in the car I woke up. So when it started playing out about a month later, me getting in the car was the only logical thing to do. After I told them all we were quiet for a while and just let the fire die then went inside. So there's my stories dot 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 reliving that last one always gives my chills and a sinking feeling in my stomach. When I was 5 years old or so, maybe a little older I would go over to my aunt and uncle's house and help my uncle fell and go for holes. It was our way of bonding. One night, I'm in bed sleeping and I see him standing in my doorway. Except, he was bright white and wearing an army uniform. I remember being so scared that I ran right through it and into the kitchen where my mom was cooking. I told her what I saw and she looked at me with shock, and let me sleep on the couch. Well, the next morning she told me how she had this dream my uncle passed away in a car accident, the steering wheel hit him in the nose in such a way that it shoved the bones in his nose, into his brain. The phone rang later that afternoon to let us know that my uncle had passed away in a car accident. So much nope happened in that day. I wasn't old enough to process grief, I just remember that it really scared me. To this day, I have to be careful thinking about paranormal things because I swear it invites it around me. I have a few other stories, but not for this thread. <laughs>